Okay, you're live. Dennis, can you mute, please? Good evening and welcome to the Planning Committee at Solihull Metropolitan Borough Council. My name is Councillor Richard Holt. I'm the Chairman of the, Council, uh, Chairman of the uh, Planning Committee um, and I have an opening uh, statement to make. During the COVID-19 virtual planning committee meetings are taking place. The planning committee meeting is being held on a virtual basis during the pandemic. And there are changes to the way the committee will operate when compared to our previous meetings, particularly with regard to public speaking. I'll, I'll explain that improvement shortly. May I remind everyone present at this meeting that it will be broadcast live via the internet and a record will be archived for future viewing. We are using the WebEx system this evening and members and officers will be communicating by that system. As set out in the agenda papers and on the website, any member of the press and public may listen to proceedings at this virtual meeting via a web link, which has been publicised by the Council website. The participants in this meeting will be the councillors concerned, the officers advising the committee and any members of the public or ward members registered to speak in the public speaking arrangements. Registered speakers will be able to address the meeting when invited to do so and technology allows via the WebEx platform. If there are any issues or connections during the particular speaking opportunity or registered speaker has informed us in advance that they will not be using the facility, officers will be able to read out any written statement that the registered speaker has submitted. Any additional material to be presented over and above the verbal presentation and written statement will be accepted as a supporting PowerPoint that can be displayed to members during the meeting. May I remind officers and members uh, participating this evening that during the meeting all participants are in control of their own microphones. You must place your microphone on mute whilst not speaking on an item. As the chairman, I will use my discretion as to order in which the participants speak and will announce whom I wish to speak. The nominated speaker should then unmute their microphone and return it, sorry, and mute it after they have finished their contribution. I remind members that they should not use the chat facility as this is only for the chairman and officers to use. With regard to declarations, if a declaration is required, after the meeting has started, this should be announced in the usual manner. With regard to voting, may I remind members of the committee that you are only allowed to participate in the vote if you have been present for the whole agenda item, including the officer presentation and debate. If you lose visual connection during the agenda item, <coughs> you are still allowed to vote. However if, you however, if you lose sound or audio connection during the item, you must not vote and have the vote recorded as an abstention. Voting will be by a roll call by the Democratic Services Officer who will record the vote. The request of members will be whether they are voting for, against or abstain on that particular recommendation. The usual procedure rules apply to debate during the consideration of the agenda items and I as chairman will have the absolute discretion. With regard to the adjournment, if I as the chairman wish to adjourn the meeting at any point, I will announce the adjournment and inform you how long the adjournment will be. All participants should remain in the WebEx meeting facility with your microphone muted. I can confirm that the, the meeting this evening, we have all members uh, present uh, with no uh, substitutions. So I'll now move to the agenda. Um, apologies for absence. None, I assume. There, there are none. Chairman. Item two, declarations of interest to receive declarations of members disclosable pecuniary interests and conflicts of interest. I don't hear any. Obviously, if there should be um, a, a, um, dec um, a pecuniary or disclosable interest, that should be disclosed at any point should it become uh, clear. Requests of members to address the meeting. There are two this evening, Chairman. One from Councillor Bob Slay, and that's the application for the proposed motorway service area at Solihull Road, Solihull. And one from Councillor Ken Leeson on the application um, the land adjacent the 
junction four at the M42. Thank you. Questions and deputations? None received. The planning committee forward is noted, as are the local uh, plan policies set out at pages seven to eight. Brings us to item seven on the agenda, the proposed motorway service area at Solihull Road, uh, pages nine to 138. And plans are set out also at pages 139 to 150. Uh, this evening, we're going to hear both applications uh, and they're going to be presented one after the other. And we will debate uh, both uh, applications at the same time. So the second application that we will deal with is uh, item nine, land adjacent to M42 uh, Junction 4, uh, with plans uh, of app from Apple Green at, at item 10, plans from Extra at, uh, per at uh, item eight. So if I could move then, please, to uh, the first item on the agenda substantively, which is the uh, proposed motorway service area at Solihull Road. If I could invite the officer, please, to introduce this topic uh, for us, please. Thank you, Chairman. Uh, uh, can we first call up Lee the um, update note so we can take take members through the update note and the changes that's been circulated. So, so members, we've got quite an extensive update note and we do apologise for that, but it needs to be correct what you're considering tonight. What you'll see in front of you is replacement tables that you need to consider tonight and what we've done is highlighted highlighting bold those areas which have changed from your original tables within your report and those the table one is on pages 11 113 153 and 241 as you'll see in bold the applicants for the hampton in arden Catherine de barn site have confirmed qualified their site area and that that is the land take of 13.66 hectares. That includes the MSA operational site of 9.74 hectares in extent, with the associated drainage works and highway works uh, and an additional 3.9 hectares. The application site, as defined by the red line, is 61.75 hectares, and hence 48.09 of that within the red line will remain undeveloped and comprise of areas of uh, landscaping, grassland, woodland planting and woodland management. There is circa 9,228 square metres of buildings. And what we've set out at the bottom of the, ta of the table there on the first page is the parking provision that is proposed at the Catherine de Barn site. If you go to the next page, please, Lee. Uh, one thing to note, from that printed is every MF motorway service station has to provide a facility for one abnormal load to meet the definition of a motorway service station and that's included at that bottom of that table that, so those are the only changes to that part of the table if you go to the next part next one lee keep going down you'll see there's a change proposed to the the box trees farm the Sh the shirley site and you'll see that we, we the, the report was incorrect in terms of the harm to the purposes and replace that first paragraph that says the undeveloped gap between Shirley Knoll and Dorridge, Bentley Heath at circa 1.5 kilometres is sub substantially undeveloped and uh, relatively open. And what you can see also on the right hand side for members clarity, we've also put the, um, the purposes of the green belt in there for for your uh, ease of access. Next slide, please, Lee. So you can see that in terms of the 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 Shirley side, we've we've identified three areas of harm to to the uh, purposes of the green belt. Well, I will say on that table, none of the weighting has changed. Uh, we've just it's just clarification points. Next page please Lee. 
Again, this one just updates the parameters for comparison table. Again, what it has dealt with on pages 14, 40, 116, 156, 181, and 244 on, on your agenda pack. Again, what we just clarified is the areas, again, within the green belt uh, and show those figures updated and the building floor areas on the on the proposal, just for clarity. Next page, please. And again, there you can see what the vehicle parking provision and we've sh shown the additional of the, the abnormal load, which is a requirement of the circular for a motorway service station. At the bottom of the page is the balancing exercise, uh, which, which identifies the harms and weights to be attributed, what your offices have attributed to the schemes. Again, what we've done is an update in terms of the, the land take in terms of the harm by definition and you'll see that in the left hand column which has been also updated for the Shirley one uh, we, on the right hand side of the screen. Next page please Lee. And the, the only other change from the um, that printed in your pages is in terms of loss of agricultural land which you'll see the the um, we put in, inserted the figure of 61.75 hectares, which is the total land take of the proposal at the Catherine Devine site. Next page, please, Lee. So what we've done is, is in a series of tables is corrected those various figures that you can see in terms of our, our, our within the report. So it, it reads correctly in terms of the, the areas and the uh, car parking provision. Next page. Uh, and then there's the correction, oh, you see it to the buildings. And there's a points of clarification where, that we've set out in terms of the requirement for a 278 agreement. The, the, the reference to Solihull Road Bridge requires that clarification. That is a bridge over the N42 as part of the DCO scheme it should refer to the Solial Road Bridge, which will create the underpass that the proposed access road uh, would pass underneath Solihull Road into the uh, MSA site at Catherine de Barnes. And then there's some corrections to the report in terms of reference to a deletion of a reference to electrical charging station and a correction in terms of mitigation, where in terms of within the within the red line boundary of the planning application includes all the mitigation except for Barbus coppice, which is off site. Uh, there's one correction on page 45 to the first table, which deals with the distances between service stations. Uh, with the report states it's 50 miles between Warwick and Hilton Park. It's that is needs to be corrected to 49 miles. And uh, at pages 150 and 175, just for members clarity, when the inspector considered the previous schemes uh, back in the 2009, the, the need for an MSA was established against the previous circular advice 01 of 2008, which set a maximum distance between MSAs of 30 miles. Government policy has changed, obviously set out in report, in 2013, where that distance was reduced to 28 miles. Uh, then again, there's some further corrections uh, to the report on page 68, as set out in the table there. Uh, if you go to the next page, Lee, please. And there, there's some just some clarifications in height. Uh, there is a, a plus or minus 0 0.5 difference between the facilities building and the heavy goods fuel filling station uh, printed on, on this uh, in, within your papers. One significant point we do need to correct is that is the figures are in relation to at the areas of Asprey Coffs crops. Just to confirm the area of Asprey Coffs, the ancient woodland prior to any felling of the, the uh, by Highways England as part of the DCO scheme is 2.27 hectares. The DCO scheme that Highways England are implementing will result in the loss of 0.21 to, to 0.46 of hectares of ancient woodland, dependent on the final design of the scheme within the allowed limits of deviation. 
This will leave a woodland area of between 1.81 hectares and 206 remaining. The felling programme for that is February this year, and officers understand it will involve the loss of woodland amounting to around, uh, circa 0.21 hectares. Uh, there would be no additional loss of ancient woodland as a result of the MSA. And then we got some further clarifications and corrections in terms of drainage on pages 87 and 88 and cl a clarification on 84 that Barber's coppice management proposals are additional benefit off-site secured through the section 106 agreement. Again, there's some further clarifications in terms of uh, the mitigation and compensation package. And there was an, uh, on page 86 of your report, there was a, 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 an element missing, which which was the, the figure for the loss of hedgerow, which amounts to 891 metres. And a point of clarification at page 89, at paragraph two, that really refers to the two properties, Woodside and Mayfield, which are uh, on Solihull Road, on the effectively the eastern side of the M42 adjacent to the uh, proposed MSA. Again, we've got the clarification in terms of loss of agricultural land, which is set out in the table, and corrections in terms of the, the loss of ancient woodland, just to make sure that the report reads correctly through the various sections. Next page, Lee, please. Uh, then there's a final few corrections in terms of Barber's coppice being an ancient woodland. And there is an omission within the report whereby there is a supplementary section 106 agreement being, uh, being committed to by the Catherine de Barnes MSA provider in terms of, of commitments for a local employment strategy and a community liaison group, which meet the necessary tests set out in the regulations or in terms of the framework and the regulations. And finally, a clarification in terms of the area for the Shirley scheme, in terms of the, the site area being 9.9 .9 hectares and the operational development being six hectares. You'll see that there's been additional uh, representations received. We've uh, received a, a letter from Saki Bati, MBE MP, to both schemes uh, and we've set out in, in full the, the objection for you uh, on, on this page and on the next one, please, Lee. And you can see his objection and you'll see that there is an additional two letters of objection being received from members of the public that raise no, no new material planning uh, considerations. In terms of the Shirley application, You'll see the, the council's public protection and officer has highlighted that the closest affected property, namely Box Trees Farm, within the submission indicates an exposure in terms of noise and vibration would not be relevant as this property is vacant. The applicant has indicated this would remain throughout the development phases prior to completion and to ensure that would happen would, uh, or the, the property remains vacant, the applicant would need to enter into, a, a, your officers believe, a unilateral undertaking or section 196 agreement to ensure that can be delivered. Uh, again, we've got some, uh, a co some further comments from the applicant on this scheme, and they advise that the areas for, for, uh, for each scheme are incorrect, but with, with the tables that we've produced, your officers now believe that they are correct in both instances. Next slide, please. Uh, again, there's some claims that, uh, that the council has, uh, uh, hasn't considered the green pulp purposes correctly. Uh, and the applicants claim that the diverted footpath around Shirley MSA makes no difference to how people access the countryside. They've advised that the Shirley MSA results in a loss of 3.8 hectares less of agricultural land, none of which is the best and most versatile land and the Catherine Dubarn schemes takes more land of which 4.75 hectares of the best and most versatile land is lost. Uh, they, they advise that the restoration of a viable use for, at Walford Hall is only marginally mitigated uh, and that it, it, it's, it is not a residual benefit for the planning balance. 
And then in terms of the Shirley MSA actually only causes one new departure and solves an existing departure. Catherine DeVarnes has five new departures and has had to pass through two levels of safety committee, including the National Safety Group and all the way through to Highways England's Chief Engineer. He could only prove it in principle because the safety benefits of an MSA were judged to outweigh the safety risks. He also advised that Catherine DeBarnes MSA fails to, fails to meet the minimum separation distance set out in national policy. Thus, the minimum and max, uh, maximum and minimum optimum spacing locational merits of each scheme balance each other out in their view. The Catherine or Barnes scheme also makes no co financial contribution to the Junction 6 Improvement Scheme. However, that matter is dealt with appropriately, your officers believe, at pages 68 and 69 of the scheme. In terms of economic benefits, I advise that the J4 MSA at Shirley rely on a 10 million, rely on a 10 million pound saving to the public purse arising from them replacing the Northern Bridge. Uh, there is no evidence that Highways England or the local authority is seeking to replace the bridge at any time soon or indeed in its entirety. In the overall comparison of economic benefits, your officers believe even if this 10 million was factored in, to those benefits, it is very marginal difference to that merits very limited weight in the overall assessment. In terms of delivery, uh, the applicant has raised some additional points in terms of timescales for delivery of an MSA at the Shirley side. The applicant contends that the, that the alternative MSA proposal would not meet the need for MSA, MSA as quickly as their proposal. There is, but your office believes there is no substantive evidence within the submission to suggest one MSA could open quicker than another. Again, we've got the, we've set out in the, the report the additional uh, letter from Saki Bati MP. Next slide, please, Lee. And there is his, his complete letter, and you'll see that there's been additional letter from Councillor Hawkins. And again, we've set out in full his uh, contribution to you tonight. Next slide, please, Lee. And you can see that there have been four additional letters of objection received, which raise no new material planning considerations. That completes the update note, members. If we can now turn to the presentation, Lee will take you through both schemes. So if we could deal with the, the uh, Catherine DeBarnes extra one, please, first. Just loading up, Laura. Thank you. Right, can we get to the next slide then, Lee, please? Thank you. So next, that slide shows you the, the location plan and the red line site in terms of the boundary of the MSA proposal at the Catherine de Barn site. Next slide. Uh, this shows the proposed access in, in terms of it and the DCO scheme. So you can see the two dumbbell islands that transgress the, uh, the M42 in that location, which will be delivered by the, the DC, the Highways England Development Consent Order Scheme, with the going northwards, the new dual carriageway in. And what will the proposal before you seeks is uh, to tap into the, that scheme by making the amendments to that junction. So what you'll see is a direct inslip from the northbound slip into the site where the pointer is going through under the overbridge on Solihull Road into the MSA site. And then the MSA proposal would then provide the, the northbound and southbound off slips to the north of the Dumbbell junctions highlighted in green in that location. We go to the next slide, please, Lee. 
this just shows another relationship as how the, how the, the access road works into the site and you'll see as a direct link in off that junction into to the site there. Next slide, please. Now this shows the parameters plan, shows again the, where the pointer is, where the DCO junction is proposed and the access arrangement. And if we just take you through the, the, the various colour schemes, so the brown area just below, that's it there, there, thank you, is where the HGV car parking area and coaches will be parked. The light, lighter form colour is where the petrol filling station would be. The mustard coloured building is where the facilities and hotel building is proposed and the grey grey area being that of the car parking area where the cars will park in front of that, that building. Next slide, please. This shows the landscape master plan to how, how the scheme intends to mitigate its harm in terms of landscape provision and biodiversity. And you can see the various areas that are proposed. Next slide, please. This just uh, shows the, the landscape management area in terms of the, the areas which inter will be managed post consent should members be minded to grant planning permission, including the management of Barber's Coppice, which is the, the area there where the pointer is adjacent to uh, Catherine de Barnes. Next slide, please, Lee. These are some visuals from the design and access statement of the proposed building. Next slide. Slide. Again, another visual for the design and extension of the building. Next slide. Uh, these are CGIs that show show the building, uh, the proposal, in, including the DCO scheme. So where Lee's pointer is at the moment is where the new dual carriageway will go towards the airport in that location, and then the the dumbbell junction crosses the M42. Uh, with the MSA to the north. Now it should should be noted that if you read in your papers that the, the proposed MSA will sit in effectively a bowl. The land levels are proposed to be reduced in that area by 10 metres. So the building will sit below the, the current land context within the bowl in that location. So you can see where the board leaves pointer is at the moment. That is the facilities building. We see where the pointer is at the moment. That's where the, the lorry camp car park is. And as you come enter into the site, you can see the other green buildings, which which are the petrol filling station. And just to the, the top of that is where the car parking areas are. Next slide, please. And this is another CGI, uh, which shows it different, just in a greater bit, little bit greater detail. You can see where the pointer is, is the petrol filling station and with the uh, facilities and hotel building to the top of the plan, the, the various car parking areas. And you can see how the, the new off slip from the DCO will be widened to take your crate access under Solihull Road through that new overbridge in that location into the site. Next slide, please. Again, this is just from an alternative view looking northwards. Uh, so you can again see the car park buildings and various uh, elements of the proposed MSA. Next slide. Just put this in for members information. This is a plan that shows the motorway network in terms of where the existing service stations are across that network, starting from Warwick service station in this on the bottom of the plan. And you can see you can work your way around the motorway network that shows the, the where the, the existing service stations are. In, re, in respect of the the motorway network around them at, around the West Midlands. Next slide, please. So we've got finally some photographs. So we, the, these are just uh, photographs internally that we've taken from in the site. So you can see the where we are. The, that is the northern boundary uh, in that location. And then we've got the Wol Wolford Hall just uh, beyond the, the script the, there, which is the grade two lot. Uh, star listed building. Next slide, please. 
then we got to a, a series of views towards uh, Asprey's Copse, which is the, the the woodland that you can see in the in the distance. Next slide, please, Lee. Again, we've got views eastwards towards Atsbury's Cops again in that location. Next one. And then we've got views of the southern and northern boundary from within the site. Next slide. And that's this is the final one, which just shows you a view of Solihull Road towards Kathleen de Barnes Lane. That's Hampton Lane Farm in the distance by the pylons. And that's where the road will be realigned and where but round about where Lee's Pointer is at the moment is where the new overbridge will uh, go into the site and that the road will be raised in that location from its current format as part of the DCO scheme. That includes, ends the slideshow from that one, but we do have a video to show if so, if we could try and load that Lee, we'll be grateful and we can talk members through that. Dave, can you type the lead on the video? Thank you. So this is a, a video that's been provided by the applicants to their site just to help members understand the site. So this is a view going northwards towards Wolford Hall Farm, the grade two star listed building. So you can see that coming up uh, here. You can see it set set against the later, and then where where we come to this this plaid field is where the boundary of the MSA site is, and where the buildings would sit. You see Asprey Cops here, just to the left, uh, and then the motorway coming along, and then. Obviously, to the right is the wider area for compensation in terms of landscape mitigation. This is uh, Wolford Hall Farm and its eight buildings. They have outlined permission for well, full planning permission for conversion to offices. This is Asbury Cops, the ancient woodland. And just to confirm that the, there is no direct loss of, of Asbury Cops caused by this proposal. And you see Hampton in Arden in, in the distance beyond the motorway. So again, we're still within the boundaries of the site with the M42 there. Uh, this is the views back up from the, the near to the M42, back towards uh, Wolford Hall and the, and the western boundary of the site. Again, going all the way around towards back again towards Asprey's Cops and the motorway here to the, uh, in the distance there. So this would be the southern boundary coming up to the site where the operational development would be. So again, we, we come round towards the M42 and we'll get some shots of uh, Asprey's Cops in a minute. And this is this is the wider site in terms of mitigation. You can see in the distance the uh, the sewage treatment plant on the uh, eastern side of the motorway. And then we've got a series of views from Solly Hall Road Bridge coming up. Looks as if it's the video has stopped. Oh, here we go. There we go. So this that's the northern side of, of the uh, motorway where the new DCO junction would be, and that's where the new on slips and off slips for, would be created for the, as part of the MSA proposal. Again, this is Solly Hall Road and there Asprey Cops on the eastern side of the motorway. And there we got views from Hampton Lane Farm back towards the motorway again. This is where you'll see the new junction going in. And then as we scan round here to the right, where the new overbridge would be taking you into the development site. So 
this is a wider view from the the Friday Lane. And this is where uh, all the off-site mitigation in terms of landscape and biodiversity enhancement are proposed. You see uh, Hampton Arden on the on the top of the hill there. And we're back into the site, looking back towards Wolf, Wolford Hall Farm there. You can see in the distance. And these are some shots of Wolford Hall. You'll see that the, the Grade 2 star listed building is in a serious state of neglect and needs some serious renovation work, which is the proposal. Uh, for the MSA at this scheme has secured its renovation, uh, uh, which is tied to the permission if members were minded to grant planning permission for the scheme. You can see that the roof is failing in a number of areas here. And this is the main farmhouse. You can see it's got ties, braces to the walls just to keep the stop the building from falling, falling down. And tiles are starting to fall off. Um, you see fascia boards are coming away. And then you can see the one element there which has got the serious braces put against it to stop the the, the gable elevation of uh, it falling down so just to prop effectively the building up you see some of the outbuildings again have roofs are starting to fail And then we just get to some wider shots of the site. Uh, you see Asprey's Cops, the motorway and the proposed site. Uh, that completes that. Uh, yeah, yeah. If, we could, if we could now go on to um, the presentation for um, Shirley hello, MSA. Laura. Hello, Laura. It's actually we're going to do the public speaking first, if that's OK. OK, but for this one. Thank you. Have a rest. That was very good. Thank you, Lawrence. Oh. So the first speaker we have uh, is a David Cuthbert on my list. Can you hear me? Mr Cuthbert, we can hear you loud and clear. Welcome to the meeting. Thank you very much for allowing me to speak. It's a pleasure. Uh, what I would say to you is, because obviously we've got uh, a limited amount of time, uh, hopefully you'll be aware that you're required to limit your presentation to no more than three minutes. And I will, I'm afraid, sort of interrupt you after three minutes if you've gone over that, just to, to ask you to, to finish. Okay. I should ju just be about on it, I think, Chair. Okay, thank you. Um, could I ask for, um, I have got a uh, document to share. Um, weightings attributed by the officers and summarised in the abridged table three on the screen are fundamental in their decision making process, yet some seem very odd. Section one, GB definition, both sites weighted substantial negative, but this site has 38% bigger land take than the other. How can they be weighted the same? Section two, GB openness. Both weighted substantial negative, but again, this site takes up 13.66 hectares against 9.9 .9 hectares at junction four. The infrastructure land taken at this site, 
0.24 hectares, nearly double that at junction four. How can they be weighted the same? Character Greenbelt, section four, both substantial negative, but surely the greater size of this site with more infrastructure, a hotel should be reflected in a greater negative weighting. Section six, loss of agricultural land, once again, weighted the same. Only limited harm or moderate weighting is given to the loss of the 4.75 hectares of the best, most versatile agricultural land at this site. But none of this type of land is lost at junction four. The loss is contrary to policy P17, yet both have the same weighting. Section eight, highway safety. Again, both the same ratings, yet junction 5A has five departures two of which are 50% of the DFT standard, all relating to safety risk. Yet Junction 4 has four departures, three exist today. None at Junction 4 relate to true safety risks. How can they be weighted the same in, in terms of safety? Section D, 10, need. Need has been established, but in 2008, an appeal for two SMSAs, including one on this site, the inspector's report concluded the development would be inappropriate within the green belt and the harm it would cause together with the damage which it proposals would entail to the continuing safe operation of the M42 and the continuation of the successful adva advanced traffic motorway system mean that very special circumstances do not exist to justify the granting of plan planning permission. The appeal be dismissed. And in 2009, the Secret Secretary of State agreed with these conclusions and upheld this decision. What has changed? The Green Belt is still here. The ATM is still here. And we're all <coughs> well aware of the recent events, including that system. Section 11, locational benefits. The distance between you these two. Got beyond three minutes now. So uh, no, it's from fifty-two. Two applications is insignificant, and the waiting ought to reflect that. Twenty-eight miles is is not mandatory. <clears throat> it seems more trees you destroy, the greater ecological contribution you make, but the greater the credit you receive for it. The aim is to minimise impact, not give credit for it. The MSA impacts the ancient woodland, Meriden Gap, Arden landscape, and veteran trees. This is really, has this really been taken into account? Trees can be replaced, land can't. Finally, we suggest that this MSA jeopardizes future infrastructure development plans for the hub. The application represents inappropriate development in the green belt. Please refuse it. Thank you very much for that uh, presentation. Thank you. So the next person on my list is Nick Roberts. Good evening. Can you see me and hear me? Thank you. See you and hear you. Uh, hopefully you heard from the previous speaker. I'd ask you to try and limit your presentation to approximately three minutes, please. Uh, thank you very much. I must say at the outset that we've not seen the updated note before you tonight, the update to the committee report, and we're told it's not publicly available until tomorrow. From what we could follow uh, via the screen, a series of important statements and corrections have been added, yet the analysis and the balancing exercise is seemingly unchanged. After four and a half years of the determination period, this is rather disappointing. Um, it is entirely appropriate and indeed proper for members to vote against the recommendation of their officers when they draw different subjective judgments on important matters or they find fault in the officer's objective assessment or as in relevance in this case both as has always been the case officers advise members decide you have before you on page seven of the report a table supposedly setting out the comparative balancing exercise for the two msa proposals before you today that's table three. Uh, Mr. Cuthbert has covered a number of these points. I will try not to overlap too much. In the first row, we have, we can see, not reflected, we have, in terms of built development, just under 9,500 square metres against 5,000 square metres, and yet the scoring is the same. Greenbelt purposes both sit in a gap between solid hole, main urban area, and villages. In the case of Catherine de Barnes, 
It's, it's between Solihull, Catherine de Barnes and Hampton and Arden, and the Junction 4 scheme sits between Solihull and Dorridge. Yet, Extra's proposal is found to only conflict with one Greenbelt purpose and Junction 4-3. We just don't see how that can be. Impact on agricultural land on the sixth row. The Catherine de Barnes scheme takes nearly four hectares more. That's eight football pitches. Takes 4.75 hectares. That's nearly 12 acres of best and most versatile agricultural land. That is specifically protected under national policy and under local plan policy. The Junction 4 scheme takes no best and most versatile land, yet both schemes are ranked the same. That is not possible. That is not credible. That misinterprets policy and a misinterpreting policy is wrong in law. If we go to the second row on page eight, uh, as, as, as has been said, the Junction, 4, the Junction 4 MSA only causes one new departure and solves one existing departure. The Catherine de Barnes has five departures, the main ones of which have passed through two levels of safety committee, including the National Safety Group, all the way to Highways England's chief engineer. He could only approve it in principle because of the safety benefits of the MSA that were judged to outweigh the safety risks of the departure. That balance falls away if the MSA can be delivered at junction four. However, again, not reflected in the table, both schemes are called equally and both. It's just not credible. In terms of economic benefits, the Catherine de Barnes scheme was originally conceptually assisted funding the Junction 6 Improvement Scheme. It does no such thing. There is evidence that the bridge needs replacing uh, as, and actually needs replacing relatively urgently at Junction 4. Can I just contribute to the exceeded three minutes? Can I ask you to sum up, please? Uh, I, 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 will, I will sum up indeed. Thank you very much, sir. Uh, finally, the Catherine de Barnes scheme would, by the applicant's own assessment, cause residual harm to two ancient woodlands by virtue of emissions. It cannot be mitigated, but it's not even referenced. In conclusion, we believe the judgments are poor, the objectivity is lacking, and we would respectfully request you refuse the application. And thank you very much for your time. Thank you very much indeed. Next speaker we have is Richard Lloyd. Thank you, Chairman. Uh, can you hear me all right? I can hear you, thank you. Okay, we, uh, I've got comments on both of these schemes, but I'll, I'll only deal with the Catherine de Barnes one, shall I? Uh, can we have the next slide, please? I'm, I'm speaking on behalf of the Open Spaces Society, and the prime concern of the society basically is public access, but of course, public access does include the access of employees trying to reach the site uh, by non-motorised means. You'll see the abbreviation NMU for non-motorised users. Go to the next slide, please, Lee. So what we're looking at is, is to try and get benefits from either of these schemes to improve access for both the applicants and their employees and the community. Next slide, please. Now, the policies that the Council has adopted does cover these issues, and the words are there saying that you will be looking for improvements to uh, specifically cycling and walking, and that the access has got to be safe, attractive, and direct. And of course, P18 very relevant in these times about health and well-being, are looking for opportunities for exercise. Next slide, please. Now, we did make a response to the consultation and would like to have engaged in discussions with the applicants, but we didn't get a response from either of them. So the outcome we're looking for is that there are planning conditions imposed or a section 106 agreement to secure improvements to access. Next, please. Just shows a view of the site and um, this, this one is in very pleasant countryside. So it is an area of interest to the public in terms of access to the countryside. Next, please. Now, to reach the site, 
does involve use of the Sony Hole Road, which is a very unfriendly environment for non-motorized users. A couple of photographs there show the narrow section going past Hampton Manor, and then further along there is a, a wider verge, which has got more opportunities. So could we have the next one, please? So at that distance of the road, 700 metres is to be rebuilt anyway as part of the scheme. We have that narrow bit, which is 400 metres, which could be problematic, but desperately needs provision for a cycleway. And then there's a further kilometre, which has got wider verges. So what would we like, what we would like to see is an upgrade along that road so that both members of the public and employees can reach the site safely. And I think the way to achieve that will be through planning conditions, if you're minded to approve this particular scheme, or a section 106 agreement. Uh, can we see the next one? Uh, okay, that, that's the end of my presentation on that. If we can come back to my presentation when we're dealing with the other, other application, Chairman. Thank you. I think, Mr. Lloyd, you've just about got to three minutes now. Um, <laughs> right, thank you. You've concluded your presentation. I think that's the position, is it? Okay. I, I don't think you should be entitled to expect to address the committee further. The, the assumption, I think, was that you, were, you seem to be assuming you'll be able to address us further about the other application. I think you're a speaker in respect to the... Well, it would be helpful if I could make some comments on the other scheme, Chairman. Well, I think, with, I, I, think, I think with respect, you, you're, you're an objector to one site and you should have one bite of the cherry and you've had your three minutes. So I think I'm a, I regret to say, given the, the amount of speakers, that, 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 that concludes your, your time with us, regrettably. Okay, thank you. So if I could come on then, I think before we, we our proposals will be to speak to allow parish councillors then to speak, um, then councillor Slay and finally the support of Paul Bedwell. So on to the parish councillors, councillor Giles Cook. Thank you, Chairman. Um, one of the consequences of speaking a bit after everybody else is uh, I might repeat myself, might repeat what Mr. Cuthbert has said. But only you can decide if, if the need of a motorway service st station outweighs policy 17 of the local plan. And as other people have said, the Catherine's the barn site is much bigger and therefore should be very substantial negative in the balance exercise. There may have been an argument for the hotel at Catherine de Barnes in the original proposal for an online MSA, but now the MSA has become offline. This is due to the design of the junction, as we've seen from the pictures. Um, this is significant as it allows direct access from the A45 NEC station and airport to the MSA and the hotel. This will inevitably mean more traffic locally, contrary to the policies seven and eight. The applicant has had opportunities in many iterations of this development to remove the hotel, but has chosen not to do so even though there clearly is no justifiable need for a hotel in the green belt. It may even set a precedent for further hotel applications at this junction. On the balancing exercise, the highway impact should therefore be substantially negative. There are 57 conditions attached to the, re to attach to the recommended application. I'll deal with a few. Condition 47 aims to restrict access to the service station to be only from the M42 by not allowing access to Solihull Road. This is in the interest of highway safety in accordance with policy P7 and P8. Unfortunately, access to the service station cannot now be restricted to traffic from M42 as the relief road gives unlimited access to local traffic clearly against P7 and P8. The same act uh, argument applies to condition 54 which aims to stop the MSA becoming a retail destination in its own right by limiting the range of retail goods sold. However, it allows most things available on the high street. The retail goods will be accessible through the link road and make it a retail destination. 
Condition 56 restricts parking to users of the MSA. With easy access to the NSA airport and station via the relief road, it will again be an ideal waiting point for drivers picking up travellers, adding to the local traffic, again contrary to B7 and B8, and once again it should be a substantial on negative on highway impact in the balancing exercise. Finally, the relief road was meant to allow free-flowing traffic to and from the clock roundabout with only slip roads to the south of the junction. As soon as an MSA is introduced, which includes northern slip roads, it comprises free flow traffic and could lead to traffic congestion at busy times. The slip roads also inevitably have a negative impact on growth capacity of UK Central, which makes this worse in the long run on the economic balancing exercise. Because of these inconsistencies in the balancing exercise, this application I ask to be refused. Thank you. Thank you very much and a compliment to you on your timing. Well done. Thank you. On to Councillor Mike Bloomer, please. Chair, it's David Cuthbert. I think Mike Blommer has had problems trying to access. Chair, do we have a written statement from this uh, from Councillor Bloomer? We do, Chairman. Would you like me to read that out for him? Parish Council welcomes the recommendation to the Planning Committee to reject the proposed development of a motorway service area at Junction 4 and subscribes to the reasons given. We consider the arguments presented around the proposed MSA at Catherine de Barnes to be only very subtly different to those used around the Junction 4 proposal and consider they rule out approval of either scheme. Both schemes, according to today's analysis, are equally and substantially damaging in the following respects. Harm to Greenbelt, substantial negative. Openness of Greenbelt, substantial negative. Character of Greenbelt, substantial negative. Loss of agricultural land, moderate negative. However, with the Catherine de Barnes proposal, the analysis effectively says that need and economy benefits exceptionally outweigh the damage. We do not accept that the exceptional case has been made the exceptional need and economy arguments are not accepted by the residents of Hampton Parish, our local MP, or the Mayor of West Midlands, Andy Street. Nor were they accepted following an inquiry in 2008, the Inspector's Report of 2009, when this proposal was last considered, a view upheld by the then Secretary of State. Nor were similar arguments accepted recently when SMBC refused to give planning consent for a care home nearby in Catherine de Barnes, which was a far less intrusive assault on the green belt. Nothing has materially changed in terms of local planning, policies or need issues since the rejection of a similar proposal in 2008. The 2000, 2013 Solihull Local Plan has no mention of the MSA, neither does the adopted Hampton and Arden Neighbourhood Plan, both of which strongly support protection of the green belt in the Meriden Gap and the preservation of agricultural land. It should be noted that in recommending the MSA at Junction 5A means choosing the site with the greatest loss of land. What has changed is the cumulative impact of a series of infrastructure projects on the Greenbelt in and around the Catherine de Barnes and Huntley area over recent years, including HS2, the Arden Cross Hub, M42 Junction 6 improvements, new Junction 5A and the M42 Relief Road, development of 700 plus houses off Lug Trout Lane. A key factor in rejection of the Junction 4 proposal seems to have been a breach of the Greenbelt defensive barrier, the M42. We feel it is important that the Council resist the temptation to turn the whole of Catherine de Barnes west of the M42 into a potential suburban infill by falling back on the M42 as a defensive barrier here also. The Parish Council asked the committee to take account of both the substantial negative impact on the green belt of this application and the cumulative damage of projects proposed within the Meriden Gap in rejecting this unjustifiable and unnecessary development. And that ends the statement of my bloomer. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Ken Blanche.
is there a councillor ken blanche here uh, chair councillor ken blanche also can't manage to access the meeting he asked okay. for his statement to be read out thank you very much mr cuthbert we'll have his statement read out please thank you chairman i refer you to the balancing exercise table three page 14 of the report pack and in particular to the section highway safety where both msas have been given neutral weight as a retired highways engineer with extensive experience in highway design and safety i was surprised when comparing the types of departures from standard of both msas they are very different in highway safety terms so the weighting doesn't reflect this msa at junction four Three numbered departures already exist at this junction. The proposals remove one of these on the southbound off slip and add one new departure relating to excessive traffic flows. This figure is only marginally greater than allowed and is therefore considered insignificant given that it relates to predicted traffic flows. MSA at junction 5A. Five numbered departures were identified and all are related to highway design standards. These are departure one, Substandard breathing length on M42 northbound junction 5A to 6. Departure 2, substandard breathing length on M42 southbound junction 6 to 5A. Departure 3, substand substandard merge taper at junction 5A northbound merge. Departure 4, stopping site distance on the approach to the segregated left turn into the MSA at junction 5A northbound exit slip. And departure five, the gradient on the approach to the segregated left turn into the MSA. Departures four and five are relatively minor and may well be removed or reduced during detailed design. They are not significant. Departure three would be acceptable if it was in isolation, but when combined with departure one, results in very significant safety issue. The available weaving length is only 1.075 kilometers which is significantly less than the required minimum of two kilometers. The combination of these two departures on the same length of motorway should not have resulted in an AIP. Departure two is also significantly less than the required minimum distance, 1.06 kilometers, and should also not have resulted in AIP. Highways England refer to the existing service area at Leicester Forest East as a justification for their AIP. However, this service area is more than 50 years old and should be disregarded when considering modern highway design standards. These standards are there for a reason, namely safety, and should not be compromised by decisions made more than 50 years ago, particularly when traffic flows then were so much lower. Conclusions. In my opinion, Highways England were correct in giving AIP approval to the Junction 4 proposals and wrong in granting AIP approval to the Junction 5A proposals. The design for 5A should have been rejected on safety grounds. In addition, this is all taking place on a smart motorway system whose safety is being questioned and legally challenged and is cited on one of the busiest parts of the UK motorway network. With all these factors in mind, these MSAs should not have been given the same weighting in a balancing exercise. There is no comparison in highway safety terms. Junction 5A is a significantly worse than Junction 4. That ends the statements of Councillor Ken Blanche. Thank you very much. Uh, so I'd like to invite now Councillor Bob Slay. As is tradition, uh, uh, councillors have four minutes rather than three minutes. So uh, you have an extra minute uh, above and beyond the others, uh, Councillor Slay. Yeah, thank you, Chairman. Um, and I thank my colleagues for the tremendous amount of work in both the Hampton Parish Council and the Resident Association in the presentations they've made tonight. And members, we firmly believe that the application for Junction 5A and the recommendation should be one of refusal, uh, not, as is the case, mildly to approve. But by its very nature, the report takes a subjective view of the weight to be attached to each of the elements on which the application is clearly considered. And we believe in a number of areas that the recommendations of the report require very close scrutiny. And if through scrutiny they are found to be different than the weighting they have been given, it should be changed. And I think the evidence has shown tonight that some very substantial concerns about the report and the weighting that's been given to some of those issues. 
And therefore, that leads us to the conclusion is not to minus to approve, but as I've said, to refuse. I must be honest with you, we've taken all of our data from the published documents. It comes as a great surprise to hear all of these new figures come in at such a late stage. And I think that that, uh, I, I must be honest with you, has created a disadvantage from the residents of, and the Hampton Parish Council. The issues around the green belts and the previous decisions in 2008, um, in essence, show, as Dave Cuthbert said, that need was an issue in that inquiry, but it didn't provide grounds to build on the green belts. And I think that's a very important point that he made at that particular time. Then there are issues around land take and the ecological impact on the environment. Taking that, the figures I took from the report, I mean, can it be correct that taking you know, 60 hectares of green belt land at Junction 5 has a lesser impact than it would be the case of a much smaller amount of green belt land taken at Junction 4? And the buildings themselves take more than nine hectares at Catherine de Barnes, while at Junction take, uh, 4, uh, take only, only four, five. And the most versatile land for Junction 5A at Catherine Barnes sits at 4.75 hectares, while at Junction 4 there are none. Uh, we believe that this, uh, this application is contrary to agree the, the intentions of, of the Green Belt. We are actually proposing here to place a very large development between two insect villages in the Green Belt, Catherine de Barnes and Hampton Arden. It severely limits the gap between the two and allows, in our opinion, further development to be proposed. On all counts, therefore, the application in scale, and as a consequence, must lead to greater damage. We support, as it said, the refusal at Junction 4, but we believe this, the same should apply to Junction 5A. As uh, has been said by Giles, uh, Junction 5A is now an offline application, not an online application as proposed originally, meaning local traffic can gain access to the site, as is quite rightly pointed out, retail, electric vehicle charging points, hotel, petrol filling stations. It's a completely different proposal to the one we saw four years ago, which, which did not have that impact. It impacts on local roads, and Catherine de Barnes is actually only 400 metres away from this proposed development. Finally, my contribution on highway safety. Highway England, as Ken Blanche has said, are proposing five uh, uh, deviations from standards, not least on the two kilometres be between the MSA and Junction 6. This, as Ken leads us to believe, and quite rightly so, has substantial safety concerns. Smart motorways are a matter of public debate as we sit here tonight, and I think we really do need to consider whether those matters have been properly considered in light of those uh, deviations. Other issues have been raised by my colleagues. We can't see too, too much difference between these two applications in some ways, but in others there are very substantial differences. Your, uh, yeah, Catherine de Barnes is minded to approve, while Junction 4 is minded to refuse. We firmly believe there's considerable doubt raised in the report regarding Junction 5A and its suitability. And as with Junction 4, we believe that the committee should refuse accordingly. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you very much, uh, Councillor Slack. So now on to the last speaker in respect of um, the Catherine de Barnes application, Mr. Paul uh, Bedwell, who supports the application. Uh, good evening, and thank you for the opportunity to speak in support of Extra MSA Group's planning application for a motorway service area adjacent to New Junction 5A of the M42 at Catherine de Barnes. The existence of a significant unmet uh, road safety need for a new MSA on this section of the M42 was confirmed by the Secretary of State in 2001 and 2009. Extra's proposal for a new MSA at Junction 5A represent the optimum location to address this need. It's, it is only a location between junctions five and seven where it's possible to achieve the government's policy regarding the maximum travel distance of 28 miles between MSAs in respect of all but one of the gaps. Extra MSA is in, is in, Extra's MSA is intended to serve motorway users and access would be via junction 5A. There is no vehicle connection to Solihull Road. The MSA can be delivered in collaboration with Highways England's Junction 6 Improvement Scheme and Smart Motorway Proposals, 
supporting the planned economic growth of the area. The full package of works include new north facing slip roads to junction 5A, providing further resilience, a benefit welcomed by key stakeholders and business organizations. The design of the MSA has been landscape led, guided by the principles of sustainable development and minimizing harm to the green belt. The scheme does not involve the loss of any veteran trees or ancient woodland. To the contrary, it commits to the long-term management of Asprey's Copse and Barbara's Coppice ancient woodland and extensive landscaping, new woodland and habitat creation will deliver significant biodiversity net gain of circa 40%, all secured by legal agreement. In accord with the government's road to zero objectives, Extras MSA will provide a range of alternative vehicle fuels, including Ionity ultra-fast high-powered electrical vehicle charging and hydrogen and liquid natural gas, fully embracing technological innovations in the fuel sector for the benefit of motorway users. Extras MSA development will also facilitate the five and a quarter million pound restoration of the grade two listed Walford Hall farm and outbuildings and their conversion to office use in accordance with detailed proposals that already have planning permission and listed building consent, all secured by a section 106 agreement. The proposals will deliver significant economic benefits for the borough. Once operational, Extras MSA will provide 330 full-time equivalent jobs, generating circa one and a half million pounds per annum in business rates and an assessed 0.67 billion pounds GVA over the first 50 years. In addition, Extra has committed to an employment and training strategy, focusing on local recruitment and skills development. Should this application be approved, a community liaison group will be established to, to provide a forum for constructive dialogue between Hampton and Arden Parish Council, Solihull MBC, and, the, and Extra for delivery of the MSA in its lifetime operation. The planning officer's report and recommendation reflect the significant benefits associated with Extra's proposals for an MSA at Junction 5A. These benefits clearly outweigh the potential harm to the Greenbelt by reason of inappropriateness and other harm, and as such, very special circumstances exist. We fully support the planning officer's recommendation. Thank you. Thank you very much, um, Mr. Bedwell, for that presentation. So that now concludes the presentation that we've had so far in respect of Catherine de Barnes' application, the proposed motorway service area at Soli Hall Road. I propose now that we hear the presentation in respect of the land adjacent to Junction 4, the Shirley site at Box Trees Farm, and then have um, the speakers um, after the presentation has been concluded. Thank you, Chairman. Lee, could you call up the PowerPoint for me, please? Yeah, it's just loading up, Lawrence. Just give me a few seconds. Thank you. Right, could we get the next slide then, please, Lee? So this is the, the location plan. So this is identifies the site in terms of the red line boundary and the works associated with the proposed motorway service station at Shirley. Next slide. Uh, this shows the uh, layout uh, of the scheme in terms of the, the works and the building. I think the next plan is far better. It shows it more in more detail. We can take members through that. So what you can see is the wire, the new off slip that comes on the southbound carriageway of the M42 with a direct link off that junction into the proposed MSA with its uh, there and you work way around the circulatory road in the site and in so you can see the semicircle if you go to the north to 12 o'clock there there's a little round, round circle to your left come down a bit that's it, where you're just going there that's it those that, that is the drive-through uh, facility coffee shop at that location and the larger green one just to it Lee there that is the facilities building with the fuel filling station for the car users. 
To the north of that is the car parking area for HGVs. And then the, the round circle next, come, come down slightly, that's it. There is the fuel station for the uh, HGVs and coaches. And then we got the coach park further to south here and the car parking area. And you see there's a circulatory road that takes you out to the bottom of the plan leave if you can, to a new island on Gate Lane there, which then you're to the return journey back along Gate Lane and back onto the on the island at Junction 4. Next slide, please. So this is the parameters plan again. Uh, if we take you through the, the various elements, so you can see that you've got the, the green area is the um, the coffee shop or drive through facility. The yellow is the facilities building and petrol filling station. Brown area to the north of that is the um, HGV car park. The lighter brown sandy colour is the fuel filling station. Then you've got the purple area, the coach park and the gray area is the car parking area. And the, what the arrows do is show you the circulatory road routes into the site, how you, you can get in and you can maneuver within the site and out back onto the, the motorway junction. Next slide, please, Lee. So this is the proposed offsite enhancement works. So you can see that the, the, the works are to within the land beyond the site boundary and highlighted by the numbers on the plan that include woodland planting, replacement of hedgerows and, and enhancement of hedgerows, um, creation of biodiversity management and going through those various elements of the scheme. So that's all on land between the MSA and what is the Dorridge to the right hand side of that plan. Next slide just shows the continuation of this enhancement work as you come towards this, the site. So you can see where the various elements are being and the edge of Dorridge there. Next slide, please, Lee. So this is the highway works plan to junction, junction four, the M42, uh, which include various improvements to road marking around the junction. You can see that the, the that where Lee's put to the northern side, that's it, Lee, there, thank you, is where the, the bridge will be reprovided to create that additional lane across the M42. And then you've got the uh, southbound slip road being widened to create access into the site. Next slide, please, Lee. And this shows you a bit more detail in terms of the junction for, uh, for and the gate lane highway works. You can see that uh, the new junction with gate lane at the bottom of the plan will become a three, -way, well, a three lane carriageway in that location with two lanes allowing you to go back towards the M42 and a left lane that allows you to go to Hockley Heath, which then take you back onto the M uh, junction four island and then the various alterations to the signing of those those lanes within the junction highlighted in blue next line next slide lee please and uh, this is the final highway plan which shows the the widening of the southbound slip road onto the m42 with its direct access into the msa there next slide please so these are some cross sections to just show, show, show you how the building will sit within the land. Again, it being cut into the land slightly and, and with buns. So the, the facilities building feel, feels part of the overall landscape context. Next slide, please, Lee. Again, there's another set of uh, cross sections for members just to see how, it, how the building will sit within that, that context. Next slide, Lee. And these are some of the uh, design proposals from the app design and access statement. So you can see how, uh, how the building would, would sit in terms of the petrol filling station, the facilities building. Just go, that's, the, that's the petrol station there, Lee. Thank you. And then just to the north of that is the facilities building. You can see then the coach park it's just to the north of the facilities building. And just to the right of there, Lee, to go to the right where the red arrow is, that's it, is where the petrol uh, station is for the HGV. Again, it shows you the circulatory routes and how you get in and out of the proposed MSA proposal. Next slide, please. 
and this is just showing it from a different direction so the with the m42 at the uh, to the left hand side there where the pointer is and then facilities building the coach park and the various elements in terms of car parking within the scheme all again taken from the design and access statement next slide please again we've got some illustrative elevations to how the building would look next slide please again for members information again uh, the the motorway network with the uh, various service stations within the, the Midland motorway network next slide please and now I've got a series of photographs just shows the MSA uh, Shirley site and views towards the southern boundary next slide again views internally the site these are towards the M42 these are taken from the public footpath that crosses the site next slide please Again, views towards the western boundary. You can see the on the left hand side the four business park, the office block in that location. Again, the motorway running along that the, the the what is the western boundary of the site. Next slide, please. Again, views towards the western boundary. Next slide. And some views of Gate Lane. How that would be? It's currently a you see a uh, single lane which will be widened to the left hand side of that to, to create the, the wide, widened gate lane to create the necessary access proposals. And I think the next, next slide is the last one, Lee. And this just shows the uh, junction four uh, and the access. So you can see the where the, um, you can see the second um, lighting column is uh, uh, in between the two there, just off the junction is where the access, where Lee's pointer is, will go into the site. To form that direct access off junction four. Chairman, that ends my presentation in terms of the scheme to you. Thank you. Uh, so we'll move on then to uh, the first speaker, who is Paul Bedwell. Good evening. Thank you for giving me this opportunity to speak against the proposals for a new MSA, a junction four of the M42 at Shirley as put forward by Apple Green. We fully support your office's recommendation that planning permission should be refused. I'll keep my comments brief. Uh, these MSA proposals at junction four Shirley would in part address an acknowledged and significant road safety need for such a facility on the M42 in proximity to Solihull as well as delivering certain uh, significant economic benefits for the borough. However, it's clear from the planning officer's report and recommendations that even if there were no alternative location for a new MSA facility to serve this section of the motorway network, the benefits associated with proposals at Junction 4 are far outweighed by the significant and substantial harm that they would cause to the Greenbelt in this specific location, where the Greenbelt is already very narrow. As the Secretary of State confirmed in 2001 and again in 2009, this is not the right location for a new MSA, even if, as in the 2009 decision, there was no other alternative location available. It's clear from both the Planning Officer's report and recommendation that this remains the case and that the benefits associated with the proposed MSA at Junction 4 are far outweighed by the significant and substantial harm that they would cause to the Greenbelt in this area. As such, these proposals for a new MSA at Junction 4 are in direct conflict with both local and national planning policy. Very special circumstances have not been demonstrated that would outweigh the resultant harm to the Greenbelt, and we therefore fully support the planning officer's recommendation for refusal. As you're aware, um, Extra MSA Group have put forward proposals for an alternative MSA development adjacent to the new Junction 5A at the M42 at, at Catherine de Barnes, and you've, you've heard about those proposals earlier. Uh, these proposals have been the subject of detailed consideration by your officers, who have concluded that planning permission should be granted subject to appropriate mitigation and conditional control, thus ensuring that the benefits of extras development at Catherine de Barnes clearly outweigh the acknowledged harm to the Greenbelt in that location. 
We fully appreciate and are grateful for the significant time, care and diligence of officers and elected members in consideration of these two alternative planning applications. Well, we look forward to your considered determination in due course. Thank you. Thank you very much. On to Mark Moran, please. Uh, hi, thank you for giving us the opportunity to uh, to talk. Um, we object to both um, MSAs, um, in all honesty, um, and but in terms of the Junction 4 one, uh, support the recommendation um, that it should be rejected. Um, we, we, we object to the Junction 4 one primarily um, on the grounds of loss of green belt at an area where the green belt is, is probably at, at some of its narrowest in the Solihull area. Um, and to loss of countryside. Um, we live absolutely locally. Um, we walk these the, these areas uh, considerably with our children. Uh, Gate Lane is our everyday commute to school. Uh, so we're very um, familiar with, with, with Gate Lane and the flooding and, and the issues that exist in that area already. Um, I, I'm not convinced that any biodiversity proposals, um, you know, relocating uh, habitat, etc., can in any way compensate for existing habitat that's there. Let's just not move it. Um, it is it is an area of of value, whether it's um, you know high in agricultural value or, or, or otherwise. Um, we don't believe the the case to um, have an MSA in the Solihull area is is entirely proven. In in all honesty, um, the the Highways England um, recommendations are just that. Uh, they're guidelines. Um, and I think it ignores things like Tesco's being 24 hours a day that is there um, and, you know, the built up area that the, M the M42 supports locally. Uh, there's lots of uh, rest areas in existence along there uh, for cars and uh, for, for stopping, etc. Um, I think it's disappointing that we're we end up comparing the two proposals and to um, support one that we, we have to disagree with the other. I disagree with both. Um, junction 4 is, is our motorway junction. Um, it's quite a complex junction as it is, uh, with lots of deviations from design standard. Um, and, and I just think this will add considerable further confusion to drivers uh, and further road safety issues. Um, it's also a junction whereby there's further development planned off it. Um, and I'm not convinced that traffic modelling can ever be pessimistic enough in considering the already consented further development off the junction in terms of Blyde Valley, uh, Dog Kennel Lane and other housing developments in the area. Um, then just uh, general flooding issues we touched on a, a minute ago. Uh, very familiar with Gate Lane. There's lots of flooding issues in the area already. I've no doubt the MSA will attenuate and deal with its own surface water within its design. Um, but it's unquestionable that every development, particularly of this size, has an effect on the water table and that has to move someplace else. Uh, Gate Lane is already regularly flooded, uh, doesn't lend itself to widening and more traffic. Um, and, and I'm very concerned about additional traffic coming out onto Gate Lane and that junction coming back onto the Stratford Road on the other side of Junction 4. Uh, thank you for listening to us and uh, just reiterate that we, we uh, support the recommendation to um, not accept uh, the this this MSA at Junction Four, thank you. Thank you. The next speaker I'll take will be Mr. Ken Blanch. Chairman, um, his statement is just a repeat of the statement that was read out uh, previously in the other application. Um, although there is a little. Uh, one brief paragraph on the MSA at Junction 4, if you wish me to reiterate that. Please, yes. Okay. The, the small paragraph there is the MSA at Junction 4. There are three numbered departures already exist at this junction. The proposals remove one of these on the southbound off-slip and add one number new departure relating to excessive traffic flows. This figure is only marginally greater than allowed and is therefore considered insignificant given that it relates to predicted traffic flows. And that's the end of that statement, Jim. The next speaker then, uh, I think is uh, Councillor 
Ken Mason. Thank you, uh, Chairman. This application requires traffic to leave the M42 at a busy and complicated junction and feed onto the roundabout that serves the motorway, the A34, A3400 main traffic route to Birmingham, but also the Blythe Valley and the, the new, I think it's four, uh, business park, which is adjacent. The stretch of the M42 around Junction 4 is one of the most congested parts and has frequent long queues of stationary or slow moving traffic. Having MSA traffic joining at this point would create additional pressure on a junction that was described by our former head of planning as one of the most difficult. Adding traffic to and from the MSA will make it even more hazardous and recently approved developments at the two adjacent business parks and the major Blythe Valley housing development will also increase future traffic the A34 and A3400 at this point. Uh, mention was made earlier about um, abnormal loads and certainly taking ab abnormal loads around this busy, busy complex would be extremely hazardous. The same site was rejected by the Secretary of State following a public inquiry to which I made representations when a former MSA application was made in 2001 and it was ruled at that time that an alternative site between junctions 5 and 6 should be the preferred site and would cause less disruption. It was again rejected in 2009 and the reasons for refusal have not been overcome in this application but I would stress that I am not making a comparison on the competing applications. The M42 from Junction 4A to Junction 5 is the recognised green belt boundary which provides clear demarcation between the urban and rural part of the borough in this area. The proposal would breach this boundary and is an inappropriate development in the green belt that would set a precedent for further development south of the M42. The importance of this boundary was recognised under the Warwickshire County Structure Plan before Solihull became a metropolitan borough, by the West Midlands County Structure Plan and by Solihull's own local unitary development plans and local development plans. All existing development, including uh, Blythe Valley and the other business park, are on the Shirley side of the M42, so the MSA would breach the current defensible green belt boundary. Adjacent to the proposed site is an area of important woodland in Gate Lane, which supports diverse wildlife, including deer, badgers, stoats and other creatures. The development would have a serious impact on local biodiversity and natural habitats. The application is also in conflict with the Noel Dodge and Bentley Heath Forum's adopted neighbourhood plan in my ward and is opposed by Dodge and District Residents Association and Hockley Heath Parish Council. And that was discussed again the other evening at the council meeting. Ideally, an MSA should have online access or alternatively be situated at a junction that is not a busy through route. The need for an MSA on this section of the M42 has not been proved and there are already services and that has just been mentioned by the previous uh, speaker such as a 24-hour petrol filling station and cafes with toilets plus a food stop on the A34 adjacent to Junction 4 which are available to motorists. I would ask the committee uh, to uh, refuse this application. Thank you. So then the next speaker is Mr. Nick Roberts, who, sp who speaks in uh, support of this. Thank you again, Mr. Chairman. There is a pressing need for a new MSA in order that motorist safety and welfare are delivered in accordance with national policy. 
the Junction 4 scheme meets the need without any highway safety disbenefits weighing against the scheme. You've heard from me already that this is a matter on which you, the members, decide, and it's entirely appropriate for you to find contrary to your officer's recommendation when you do not agree with their advice. There are a number of very important matters that are not readily evident when you read this, when you read your committee report, and in fact are simply absent from the summary balancing exercise in Table 3, and that remains so after the update. The Apple Green scheme at Junction 4 has over 30% less inappropriate development in the Green Belt. Contrary to what you've just heard from Mr Bedwell, the Green Belt between the site and Dorridge is three times wider than that between the extra site and Capital of the Barns. The Junction 4 scheme has almost half the amount of new buildings. It has no hotel to compete with Solihull's existing hotels, all of which will be in significant financial distress because of the pandemic. Hotels are not a mandatory requirement for MSAs. Do you really need one in your green belt? The Apple Green Scheme takes less agricultural land and no best and most versatile land. The scheme is much more compact than that at Catherine de Barnes and sits tight to Junction 4, well away from any houses. In terms of highway safety and departures from standards, if you look at the top of page 50 of your committee report, you will see the summary position. We only require one small departure and remove a significantly larger one. When you go back to page eight and the first line of the table, Catherine de Barnes calls five major departures and yet this table which she said to objectively assess the two schemes it just can't be right in this regard if you look at page seven on the eight on the on the fifth row the substantial negative harm we call to the green belt objectives relates solely to requiring a footpath diversion and thus there is a perverse conclusion that we make the countryside less accessible however the report fails to mention we don't change the footpath at either end where it joins the urban areas and nor does the report, nor even the verbal presentation, even mention the brand new footpath and recreational links we create in the offsite enhancement area. An MSA at Junction 4 has no effects whatsoever on Highways England's new £282 million Junction 6 improvement scheme. On the day of opening, 64% up to 64% of the traffic going through that the new Junction 5A will be going to and from the MSA. The Junction 4 scheme um, does not affect this critical new highway capacity, which is necessary for the future economic development of Solihull and also essential to the West Midlands economy. We have at Junction 4 no material impact on heritage features, no ad adverse impacts on ancient woodland or other ecological interests, no noise, air quality, amenity or drainage effects. In fact, the Junction 4 proposal is not subject to objection from any technical consultees consulted. In addition, we will deliver the greater economic benefits. If you believe you have to approve an MSA, we believe without any doubt that the one that is best for Solihull is the Apple Green proposal at Junction 4. As such, we respectfully request that you resolve to grant it. Many thank you for your time again. So that now concludes uh, all of the speakers uh, in respect of the um, Junction 4 application. Now uh, we are going to, I think, unless I'm corrected, um, debate this and I should move. Standing them. orders, Chair. What? Standing orders. To move the motion. Oh, what are you saying that I move the motion? I think we that is what we have to do before we go to debate, but therefore you may wish to do standing orders for both applications at this point in time. Uh, I will leave officers, uh, maybe Mr Andrews can assist with that or our legal uh, representative, but I think we have to do standing orders first. Yeah, no, I, th I think unless Aisha wishes to correct me on this matter, I think that would be the, the best step to take, Chair, through Councillor Grinsorner. Well, I think, I think that what I said wasn't it, uh, I was going to move the motion. 
So uh, it's my responsibility to start the debate. The council's standing orders require me to move the motion. Although I'm moving the motion, I'm still undecided on how I will vote. I'll make this clear, this relates to both applications. Do I have a seconder? Seconded, Chair. Thank you. Right, uh, so what I would suggest we do uh, is um, consider both applications together and debate them and uh, we'll go through the table uh, of the balancing exercise at table three of the um, table that's been given to us the updated one will follow but it, it's obviously um, previously been provided in the pack um, what i propose we do is we debate uh, in um, sequential terms issues such as green belt, um, loss of agricultural land, heritage assets, highway safety, locational benefits, economic landscape and ecology. And what I suggest we do uh, is that we start off with uh, dealing with all of those issues in respect of the Catherine de Barnes application first. And then we, uh, once we've concluded all of those topics, we move on to the um, Stratford Road site. I just think by doing that, there will be a certain um, continuity of consideration of the issues about that particular site, rather than chopping and changing from one site to the other. Any, any comments on that procedural suggestion, Councillor Grinsall? Thank you, Chair. Um, yeah, just one comment that I picked up from the presentations. And can I, first of all, thank all of the people that have spoken. It's been most uh, elucidating and I appreciate their time and their efforts. But yeah, I, I did make notes. Uh, and my big concern before we go into this is something that uh, um, Councillor Slay certainly mentioned, and I think so did um, um, Mr. Cook, uh, regarding the weighting of these um, different aspects in terms of the size and area of the uh, two applications. Um, so, you know, uh, I, I, I'm not sure whether that's relevant to what you were trying to say, but it did strike me um, um, as being important when it was mentioned in the uh, presentations, Chair. clarify that could you repeat what you've said that i don't quite understand what what the point is you're making well I'll, I'll i'll certainly try um there was mention made about the weightings were similar or identical for both applications on various different um uh parts in the balancing exercise that didn't relate to the area or volume of the application in that they were the same, um, albeit one is half the size of the other. So, you know, um, I, I just wanted to flag it, and I, I know that Councillor Allen, uh, Allen also had a hand up. Yeah, I, I understand the point you're making. I think that will become clear. Uh, as we go through the comparison exercise, or at least as we debate each topic, because what we're being invited to do by the speakers, I think, is to attach more or less weight, depending how we see it on the particular items in question. Uh, rather than talk about it, I think we should just get on and start debating it, really, just start get, getting through the issues, because there's a lot to get through. Uh, so... Um, uh, that's what I would like to do, uh, unless there's any objection to that procedure. Councillor Goff? Chair, I was just indicating that I would be ready to speak when you're ready to allow that. 
procedural matter or about the substantive topics? Substantive topics. OK, yeah, that's good. Thank you. OK, let's move on then. Uh, let's start with the green belt um, um, uh, harm by definition. Um, and this is uh, part of uh, table three. Uh, we have um, a figure of 13.66 hectares uh, with the operational site being 9.74 hectares. Uh, with associated drainage a further 3.92 hectares of land and the application uh, by defined by the red line boundary 61.75 hectares 48.09 48.09 hectares of land within the red line boundary will remain undeveloped and comprise lands of areas of landscape grassland woodland planting and management i would like us to focus on this particular issue uh, obviously speakers can talk about the general issues of Greenbelt issues um, and uh, whether or not they consider uh, the uh, very special circumstances have been um, um, achieved, uh, sorry, uh, uh, um, uh, maintained or, or, or obtained. Uh, so uh, if I could uh, invite Councillor Ryan, I think he's uh, hand in the air first, if you'd like to start. Yes, um, <clears throat> thank you, Chairman. Chairman, may I first uh, thank uh, all of the speakers and congratulate them on the detail that they possess in their uh, presentation. Can I also thank the, uh, the applicants for the, the pride in which they have put forward their applications and presenting us with all of the supporting material that they have brought together from, from both sides. And also, Chairman, at this stage, I, I would like to uh, pay tribute to uh, the officers for their professionalism and the way in put, they are put forward in good faith uh, the presentation of both applications. That leads me, Chairman, into uh, the site itself in Catherine de Barnes. If the applicant for Catherine de Barnes set out to find the worst site for a MSA, then I congratulate them, they found it. And I must draw attention, Chairman, and I hope you'll be able to see it, to the horrific accident that took place not far from uh, junction six where six people lost their lives through the weaving exercise from the m42 get to get on to junction six and perhaps uh, at that time into the nec and elsewhere and at this particular site we have got to deal with five departures in view of what happened where six people lost their lives and a number of accidents has taken place since that time and a number of, of tailbackings take place regularly before uh, the lockdown. And on top of all that, Chairman, you have to take into account the uh, the HS2 of 9,000 car parking spaces, which has been given to approval, that'll bring extra, extra pressure in the vicinity. So road safety is of high importance to me and I'm sure to all members of the committee. Nothing can mitigate the loss of so much green belt habitats, hedgerows, Distribution and it's just massive, Chairman, when you take it all in into uh, consideration. Uh, in in my view, if this application was to go ahead, it would be a ghastly follow of a destruction in this particular area. And that is why, Chairman, I at this particular stage have come to the conclusion. Unless I hear anything 
is significantly different than what I've just heard. I will not be able to support the application uh, for an MSA in this particular location of Catherine de Barnes and Hampton in Arden. Thank you, Chairman. Councillor Ryan, uh, you, you make a, a, a very important point about hi highway safety, uh, but I would like to address the committee on the issue of highway safety. It, it's, it's obviously a matter of grave concern that people's safety should be um, paramount uh, in the use of the motorway service area. But our advice in terms of this planning committee is that the highway issues have been determined by the highways authority. Uh, th that uh, the uh, uh, topic for debate, uh, the fertile topic for debate, are issues principally in respect of green belt. I think I, I don't, for one minute, uh, seek to um, 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 de-emphasise the importance of highway, but I think in terms of the committee's attention, the committee's direction in terms of how it should approach the, the issue, I'd encourage more debate really on the issues of green belts. So you've commented, uh, I, because, it, because there's a lot of topics to go through, I'd like to give you an opportunity to come back and address specific green belt issues at the moment. You've talked about the amount of um, um, the size of the application in terms of the, the, the take. You've talked about um, the um, uh, uh, issues in so far as um, biodiversity, I think. Would you like to, to comment any further on, on green belt issues? Because I'd, I'd like this to be an opportunity, then I, I move on to the next speaker and, and we don't go over these items again, if that makes sense. There isn't much more I can add uh, with regards to the, to the green belt, Chairman. I thank you for allowing me to come back. But there are a number of issues that members should not be inhibited in actually speaking out about, whether or not at the end of the day they are um, serious enough to actually have weight uh, um, weighted against them is another matter. But members should not be restricted from a member point of view to be able to express their views which, 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 which concerns them. The weighting exercise, of course, is very subjective. And where the green belt is, um, is an issue for me, and I'm sure for many other people, in, t in terms of climate change and the climate change emergency and the loss of farmland, and uh, that is very important. So these are important issues for all of us to raise and all of us to grapple with. What I'm trying to do is to express from a local perspective, from a perspective taking all into account with regards to the applicant and to the objectors. As a member, looking at it objectively, uh, I cannot support the application on the grounds that I've originally said, particularly on the, on the green belt. So, Alan, then Councillor Cole. Thank you, Chairman. Um, I, I have to agree with uh, uh, Councillor Ryan here. I mean, when we consider that the, uh, the whole reason or the uh, significant need for a motorway service station is uh, because of the safety of drivers, I don't see how we can discount highway issues. And there are lots of issues in the, that are written in the report, particularly those that Councillor Ryan has just mentioned about the deviations from the uh, the safety issues um, uh, on uh, on this particular on this particular road. So I, I'm not absolutely sure. I mean, we all know why um, we don't uh, want uh, building in the in the green belt. We all know why that is. Um, and I, I think all of the other, uh, um, the, 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 I mean, the, the reports, pages and pages long, we need to look at all of these things, I think. I'm not, certainly not going to prevent anyone from talking about it. It'll be a matter for officers to address you 
ultimately rather than myself about the significance of highway issues. But um, insofar as our decision making process is concerned, we do not have any contradictory expert evidence on the issue of highway safety. And I would counsel caution really in terms of that being a substantive issue for uh, a decision. Uh, and I'll let officers come back to us on that point in due course. Um, but I think we should just let the, the conversation flow. I think we should just continue to feel our way through this um, difficult matter. So I'll go on then to Councillor Cole, please. Thank you, Chairman. The the area around Junction 6, Kathleen de Barnes, has been under immense pressure on the Greenbelt for years, well, probably going back to the late 50s, early 60s. And it doesn't get any better, it doesn't get any easier at all. We've been nibbling away at this little, little area for years and years and years. We've had the airport extension, we've had the railway station put in, we've had the MEC built, and then we've had the MEC extension. And don't forget the M42 itself, that, that ploughed through Greenbelt land originally. Um, and we're still nibbling away at the area. We've got HS2 going through it. And there's a new housing development not going to be very far away. And I'm really, really concerned about this area of the Meriden Gap. And I say to myself, where is it all going to end? Are, are we going to build tarmac straight over up to Coventry or not? We've got to, we've got to put a stake in the ground somewhere. And this area is so valuable and it's under so much pressure. It's unbelievable. The area there is under immense pressure. I mean, new housing development, HS2 coming in, and it's just going to want more and more land to be taken for more and more development. I'm clearly most unhappy with this, and I'm not against this issue. Yes, uh, thank you, Chairman. Um, it seems today we, you know, we're in a little bit of a, a comparison mode here, where you know, listening to the speakers, you know, we're arguing for the merits of one scheme uh, rather than the other. But uh, you know, like my colleagues have already mentioned, uh, I don't feel I'm in a position to support either of them at the moment. Um, you know, as far as I remember, the you know, the M42 or parts of the M42 were built in 1976 and the particular part that goes through Solihull was in 1985 and you know members correct me if I'm wrong but um, we've managed without a service station in this area since you know since all that time you know there are service stations around and okay it's you know it's not for me to question um, whether we need a service station or whether we don't because I believe it you know it, it's potentially the guidelines have established we potentially do However, with the consideration of the green belt, you know, Councillor Cole has, has made some great comments there about, you know, what's been happening to the green belt in this area. And, you know, I'm inclined to agree with all of those comments. And, you know, the government and us in Solihull, you know, Solihull Council, you know, we've made stakes in the ground where we've talked about protecting the environment. And this goes in the opposite direction of protecting the environment. We're trying to encourage less vehicles on the road, not more vehicles on the road. So I would have struggling, you know, I would be really, really struggling to support either of the, those applications. Thank you, Chairman. Peter. Chairman. JLR also have completely obliterated the Greenbelt land in Elmden and in Bicken Hill wards with their huge buildings. What was once a pretty country lane has now been completely wiped out. Just over a mile away as the crow flies in Catherine de Barnes across the fields, this motorway service station is proposed again on Greenbelt land. Just as JLR buildings have destroyed acres, acres of fields and ancient woodlands, beautiful trees, this will do exactly the same. There are public footpaths across the site that are marked out in red on our map on the site.
They may, albeit they may not be where the buildings are proposed to be, but they will have to be rerouted if this goes ahead. I sometimes wonder why we bother to even have a green belt, because every time something like this comes up, we say very special circumstances and yes, we get it. I'm not at all happy with this. It, it's a place of natural beauty. It's a place where little else for people to go in and see the countryside around this area. Very little places for people to go. And this is a lovely place for people to go and for people to walk. I've walked it myself across those fields, across the green belt, across there quite recently as well. And I, I, I think it, it's, it's, it's terrible, terrible destruction to put a motorway service station on this green belt. And I do not see any special circumstances for it whatsoever. Paul Allen much uh, chairman and uh, I'm, I think I'm going to agree with almost everything that's been said so far this evening by my colleagues and not the least of course the people who have been uh, to us this evening uh, from Catherine de Barnes and indeed Brown Shirley and from the villages. We live in a borough made up of villages that's what Solihull Borough is and the thing that really stuck in my mind and as I was going through these papers nearly 260 odd papers to read and I know my colleagues are like me, they've done their best to read almost every bit if you can. Um, on page 36, she gives you the details of um, you know, what uh, exactly is the green belt. It gives you all the bullet, bullet points. I won't read them out, but you can all look them up if you wish to. Very straightforward. But as I was looking at it, um, my feeling was that I'm looking at very special circumstances. So I tried to find the very special circumstances. And I actually don't think the, the, the um, fact that we are being told, and I suppose the special circumstance really, with respect to Council Allen, it is down to um, the fact that we're being told that we do need more um, motorway surface areas. And uh, that's what's being brought in here. Now, I don't know when the 28 mile per hour sorry, per mile, 28 miles between two service stations came in. Um, I'm not sure. In fact, uh, we can't ask our councillors, but it might have been there when the previous, um, and those people at the uh, parish councillors who have also spoken to us this evening, it might have been there then when we were looking at it before, when these applications came up. And I remind myself at that time they were thrown out anyway. Now, I think also I have the privilege, or maybe not, being the only person who was there um, when this motorway was opened up in 1984, I think it was, something like that. Uh, and I know I was with the Council Peter Kelly, who was representing this area uh, for many, very many years. And I remember very clearly, uh, you know, it was very strange. And when it first took off the M42, it started quite slowly, really. And the big thing was to get off the main issue then, bearing in mind Noel Dorridge uh, area, uh, and the A4141, I think we call it now, was a, a rat roof coming from Solihull right through to Warwick with, with heavy goods. And of course, this was the thing to get those off the road. And of course, now we uh, use cars. Everybody's using cars. I can't go on about the future. We know we're going to try and stop that. Um, but it is a fact of the matter that there are motorways are undoubtedly a very good network. I use them myself. Um, and I do get tired myself, and I'm sure others do. And I, so I, I think the safety angle, which I would have said was the basis of these applications that have come to us this evening, uh, is what it's all about. Now, the other thing, of course, they're in the green belt. And I think somebody else has just mentioned the Meriden Gap. I've been on your council a very long time, and I can't remember probably a week when somebody doesn't talk about our Meriden Gap. We are proud of that gap. And I think... Uh, as uh, Councillor Slater has just said, that area of ground between those two junctions uh, is very green. It is a green belt area. And I don't think we've already, the second application has been refused, uh, has been up for refusal anyway. But the first one, the one we're looking at at the moment, the Catherine de Barnes, um, I find the same um, conditions that you have been, we've been given to say that we shouldn't have the one at Junction 4 are exactly the same, actually, at uh, Junction 5. So I can't quite see why they aren't both up for refusal. 
I have to say, Chairman, I respect what you say. You've asked us to look at them separately. Um, I find that a bit difficult. My, where I find it difficult is because I have been looking at them together, but I find myself keep going back to pages 244 and 245 at the back of the papers, which I know other members have probably been looking at, where it shows the difference between the two applications. Can I just say on the design of the applications, I actually don't have too much trouble with them. Uh, and the hotel, I think that's, that's fairly uh, standard in a lot of our motorway service stations. So I don't have difficulty with that. But I do have difficulty with the fact that it is just isn't the right place to put it in this green belt, which is so very precious to our borough. And the word I've got down is sprawling. It comes up once or twice during uh, in the papers, sprawling of our villages and so on. We do not want all our villages clumped into one. Now, I represent Noel and Councillor Meeson was here earlier and we, uh, we both represent Noel and Dorries together. And I must admit those two villages are pretty close. We've only got really a cricket club in between. But that doesn't mean to say that we should encourage areas of land, agricultural land in particular, uh, to uh, be allowed to, you know, to start building on it and incurring um, intrusion into areas such as Catherine de Barnes and Hampton in Arden. Both, in their own way, are managing to be separate at the moment, albeit a uh, few miles lengths of, uh, of road, but they are separate villages. I think sprawling is something that we've got to avoid. The word is mentioned several times in this document. We don't hear of it very often, but we certainly have got it in the papers tonight. Um, we are normally asked to sort of wait and see how things go, but I am leaning towards what a lot, 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 lot of the members are saying this evening. I'm not happy uh, with this um, design at Catherine de Barnes, uh, and I think it is a very big danger that it will cause uh, lack of, of in the individuality of the two villages that are literally adjacent to where this uh, service station is going to be um, uh, built as if it got through uh, in, a, on a, in another way. But this evening we'll make a decision later. So I'll press my case, but as I say, I've been thinking of the Greenbelt issues on page 38 all the way through and clicking back with the forwards 244 and 245. And when you look at the back chairman at the, you know, the two, um, uh, two sides, looking at the um, the balance exercise. It's a very good document, actually. And majority of them, they're all more or less the same. There's just only very few that are different. So um, my sincere thanks to our officers, of course, and you know I have great respect, uh, and I do thank them for the work that they've put into this. But I cannot, I do find it difficult at the moment to agree in, in allowing this application at Catherine de Barnes to, to go ahead. Thank you, Chairman. Councillor McNaughton. Thank you. Um, I think one of the things that was um, perhaps the most controversial uh, amongst the speakers that we've had today was um, the green belt assessment in the papers here and the relative land take between the two proposals. And um, I think that's probably because uh, the assessment, the, the result given to that assessment is qualitative and, and, and it's always qualitative not quantitative in our paper, and that's probably just for consistency. Um, that, but that doesn't mean we can't take into account the actual land take and come into a decision about each of the, the two um, the two proposals. That is part of what we can consider. Um, it's also not really the number of reasons for inclusion of land in the green belt that are being contravened. It's that any are, and that it's important that for any reason there should be very special circumstances provided. So I don't take the three versus one argument the fact that any are contravened means we need to find those very special circumstances and they need to be um, of the same magnitude, whatever. Um, as I said, there is already a huge impact on the green belt in the um, Catherine de Barnes uh, area. Um, and that this just makes what the proposal in that location makes what remains all the more valuable. So we need to take that into consideration in that balance too. And I think, um, Perhaps something that the recommendation before us skirts over a bit in the in the papers, but is actually really very important is the fact that the 2009 appeal decision does actually make it clear that the assessment of need in itself does not represent very special circumstances. So we need to bear that in mind, and the, that must be the case because 
the second, the, the Junction 4 proposal, is recommended for, for refusal when that same assessment of need exists for, for both, because it's the same stretch of motorway, so we, we shouldn't get distracted by that either. The very special circumstances still need to be overwhelming and can't be outbalanced by the need for an MSA um, in itself. Um, with the Catherine de Barnes one, I would just say that the hotel feels like an unnecessary additional element, which increases the land taken from the green belt without justification, from, from in, my, in my view. And um, you know, where even were very special circumstances deemed to exist for the true service station elements, they can't be found to exist for the hotel. Um, and I think that's quite an important point that we bear in mind too. Uh, just, just finally on Greenbelt, I suppose the, there is also a loss of high quality agricultural land in that area, which is significant. Um, I mean, others have mentioned safety, uh, so I'll briefly do that if that's okay, Chair. The, um, the uh, highway safety element is a, is a material planning consideration. Obviously, we get a lot of guidance at things at this level that we need to take very seriously. And obviously, it doesn't have the same impact from our perspective, from what we're supposed to consider as perhaps the Greenbelt does, but safety is a really important consideration. And um, I'm not really convinced by the safety arguments regarding the changes in the running mode, although I, I do appreciate and accept the argument that that might be temporary. Um, but unless I've mis misread the papers, one of the deviations listed for the Catherine de Barnes um, application seems to be deemed acceptable in principle because because and i might have misread it but it seems to say because it's essential to the scheme's delivery which doesn't really seem to be a good reason um i don't think that can be what it says but that's how i read it so i'm ready to be corrected on that one and and also the the leicester forest east comparison isn't convincing for me the report says there's no significant impact of the reduced weaving distance from from the guidelines on collision data but there does nevertheless seem to be a concerning proportion of collision data that could be argued to relate to that. So I'm not really sat, you know, comfortable with the, with the assessment that's been made there. I think that's most of my um, most of my comments for, for for this section. Thank you, Councillor McNaughton, and I do commend you for your analysis of very special circumstances. Doesn't equal the issue of need. I think that's an important point. Um, it's a very important point. Um, so who, who would like to speak next? Uh, Councillor Grinsall. Thank you, Chairman. Um, I'm really grateful to my fellow members um, of the committee. Um, they've said an awful lot of what I wanted to say. Um, and uh, I would merely point everybody to, based on what I've heard thus far, is policy P17, Countryside and Green Belt. And it pretty well um, uh, states it there. There seems to be some ang am ambiguity, uh, and I'd like just a little bit of clarification from officers. Um, I think it was, um, Mr. Cook, who said that people from non-motorway traffic could use this as a retail destination. I'd like some clarification on that. Um, but the one thing I wanted to impart to members, uh, and Councillor Hall Allen mentioned the 28 miles. Um, and of course, this is uh, vehicles have changed in the years. Uh, in 2009, we probably didn't have sat-navs. Now we've all got sat-navs, and if we press a button, we can find out where the nearest petrol station is and where the nearest toilet is and where the nearest cafe is. Um, and it was interesting for me because I did do some calculations. And uh, the distance between um, Warwick... Um, to Tamworth is 43.2 miles. Yeah, it's above the 28 miles. But if you look at Warwick to, um, to Hopwood, I know you're not coming onto the M42, you got, you're going M4 toward the M5. Um, that is 28.6 miles. 
1.6 mile, you actually come off the motorway at Hopwood. So therefore, you, and there is a traffic line which you can turn around and come back again and join the M42. If you take the distance from um, uh, Hopwood to Tamworth, 27.4 miles. I'll leave that thought out there. But I, like other members, um, purely in terms of green belt, uh, um, cannot support either application. And I do not believe that any uh, very special circumstances has been shown. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Councillor Greensall. Just uh, I'll let the officers comment on your point about accessibility of the site. I think Councillor Slay made the point about it's an offline application effectively so that um, traffic from the direction of the airport uh, using the new road will be able to gain access to site. Uh, so it isn't completely online. It isn't completely and only accessible from the motorway network. And I think that is obviously a, a significant aspect that you're, you're referring to. Um, and I think uh, for my part, I think also I, I would agree that it, it, it uh, adds the intensification of the site because it isn't uh, cut off just the motorway network. It, it's um, accessible from the local area. It might be said you need to go a circuitous route to get into it by using the road, but uh, people will get to know the, the network and how to access it. and if it has a hotel and other items uh, to use there and other retail offerings, then no doubt it, it could become a destination site in its own right. I think that's the point that you're making. Uh, next speaker. Okay. Shall we, that, shall yeah. we, sorry, sorry Councillor Grinsall. Could I have an answer to that, please? Would you like to deal with the offline online point, please? Um, hello, Chairman. Um, yes, Councillor Grinsall, you are right. The um, Catherine de Barnes MSA is now offline, and that is simply for the reason of the DCO scheme. So it's as, as, as your Chairman explained, um, local traffic, if they chose, they could use the, um, the DCO dual carriageway to then um, travel from the A45 Coventry Road down to this, down to the new junction, and then they would go around the bell, um, around the roundabout, and into the MSA. Um, but I would point out, um, Chairman and members, that there is no vehicular access for motorists from Solihull Road. So it is simply the only access you could ever get, other than the M42, is from the, the DCO strategic road, and that is all. I hope that's helpful. It is. Thank you very much. So I think we've we've done a lot on green belt. I think I'd like to move on to um, uh, I think a topic that's quite related to that, which is the loss of agricultural land. And um, although I'll come back to uh, a compare and contrast, uh, <laughs> it's difficult to try and get the sort of thing right. But it, I think if we look at the loss of agricultural land, it's sixty one point seven five hectares uh, for Catherine de Barnes and 9.9 .9 hectares uh, for um, uh, the Shirley site. Obviously a significant loss um, uh, of, uh, of size. Um, and um, I wonder whether the, the, you'd want to have any debate about the particular size of loss of the uh, Catherine de Barnes site in terms of the, the site. It, it, it is said that it's mitigated, of course, with a lot of um, um, uh, planting out uh, uh, away from the actual built site, but it's still a, a loss of agricultural land, uh, which is currently being used in that way. Does anyone want to discuss that? Alan, thank you. Paul? Thank you. Um, yes, once that agricultural land is lost, it's lost forever and no amount of mitigation can make up for it. Um, so I, I just think it's such a huge loss. And uh, the uh, site at Catherine de Barnes is the more um, sort of uh, 
it's a bigger uh, area of agricultural land and it's supposed to be the better agricultural land. I don't know how you you actually work out which is good and which isn't. Uh, agricultural land is a very, very important uh, uh, part of our uh, green belt. And uh, I, I, I think um, I think that once it's gone, it's gone. And uh, I, I am absolutely against that happening. Paul? Sure, yes, I, I agree with Councillor Allen on that. Once that land is gone, it's gone for good. It'll never come back. But I, I'm going to go back to the, the Meriden Gap again. And I think we all know that the Meriden Gap is basically agricultural land. So if you're losing any of that land in the Meriden Gap, you're losing agricultural land. And agricultural land is so important to this country, it's unbelievable. I don't think it gets the recognition that it should get. But if we lose it, it's a substantial piece and it'll never come back. And it's also another nibble of the green belts. Thank you, Chair. Any of the speakers on this topic? Chairman, can I make a point of clarification, please? Yes, please do. Thank you. Um, I'd like to refer members to page 91 of your uh, committee papers. And this is um, clearly relating to the Catherine de Barnes um, application. Now, of course, I'm mindful that the site area of Catherine de Barnes is, is very large. However, the report does make the distinction that much of the loss of agricultural land is actually put to the mitigation for um, landscape and ecology benefits. And quite obviously, members, that is reversible because the land isn't being built upon. So at any point, that could actually change. So, and, and equally, the report does make clear to you that in terms of the grading of ag agricultural land, um, actually, it's the case that um, the loss of, of land to development and the loss of the quality of that land to development is actually um, no different to, to that at, um, at the Shirley scheme um, because it's all 3B. Three, three um, there's only 4.5 hectares of the more um, versatile 3A, 3A agricultural land. But as I say, that, that is the um, ecological enhancement, so it's reversible. So I do I do think that that distinction needs to be understood by by you all, um, and obviously the balance you put onto it is is your choice. But you know, please take note of that point, and it's all set to house on page ninety one of the paper. Thank you, Chairman. So I think uh, Councillor Cole. We come back, Chair. Um, we're on about the grading of agricultural land. Yes, the, we do have various grades in the country, but we have a multitude of agriculture in the country. There's, there's the sheep farming, um, uh, there's, there's cows and there's, there's um, vegetables, etc. Um, you'll find that most, most farmers will, uh, have got a mixture of land on their farms and they use the best land for, for growing crops and the poorer land for, um, for animals. So we, we mustn't take our eye off this. It is, it is, it is a mixed um, land use in the country. And it, whatever you do, if you're taking land away, you're taking land away from agriculture, which includes animal farming. I have to say, I find it somewhat curious to say it's capable of being brought back into use. It seems an, a, a, a sort of um an unrealistic concept you know if, if it's taken away for a mitigation for the hotel for the service station then no farm is going to go back onto that land it just doesn't seem logical to me to say it's capable of being reversed because it's it's not going to if that service station is there it just doesn't make sense to me now, despite what uh 
um, Miss Allen says, I, I just don't understand the logic of that really. It is a loss of agricultural land and I think that's how the committee, that's how it's fairly put to the committee, isn't it? Maybe that's just a statement rather than a question. Um, Mr Andrews? If, if I may Chair, sorry, just to try and clarify, I think what, what Kim's um, highlighting there. Um, to a degree, yes, you're right. In this case, in th this circumstance, with this application that we, we have before us, there is a mitigation programme put forward onto that land that will see the loss of the agricultural land at this time for those mitigation purposes. But it's not being built on. I think that's the key point. It's being kept in, a, in an ecological kind of sense, in a natural sense, as part of the natural environment. So should circumstances change at some point in the future, it's not like you have a, a concreted field in that respect. That, that land is still in a natural format that could be returned to agricultural purposes if that decision was taken. So I think that's the, where, where Kim was going with that point. It, it's not a permanent conversion, if you like, in the, in the same sense as uh, putting a building or, or a car park on, on that land. Just thought that but, was, that but there are two separate <laughs> concepts here. There's one of ecology, which is, has its own heading for us to consider, and one of agricultural land. And I think we're focusing at the moment on loss of agricultural land. And I think it, it's a statement of fact that the agricultural land is lost by virtue of this application. I don't think there's any debate about that and I think members have, have made their comments. So next on the, the list of items for us to discuss uh, insofar as Catherine de Barnes is concerned is highway safety. Um, we have obviously given that. I think Councillor Ryan had his hand in. Oh, his head. A bit. Th yeah. Thank you very much uh, uh, Councillor Grinsel. So Councillor Ryan. Yeah, thank you Chairman. Um, I agree very much with Paul and what he has said regarding agricultural land. I don't think he gets the credit nationally in farming. I guess the reserves. As a country, we we have to feed um, uh, 70 million people three, three times a day, every day, uh, 365 days of the year. And, and we need land to do that. And as we uh, saw on the video, it was very clear that it showed us the land being uh, being uh, being tilled and planted, and crops will eventually grow and go into our food. Uh, so I think to to destroy that, we are destroying something very precious, and future generations will not forgive us for if we were to approve this application. And I think future generations will not forgive us for they devastation that we have inflicted on the countryside bear, through lack of a thoughtful process with regard to the climate change emergency now that this that Sully Hall Council is pursuing with all vigor with policies and determination to make sure that we play our part locally. And I think this will show really as part of the borough of Sully Hall that we mean what we say we do what we say, and we are concerned about about uh, the climate change emergency. And in that, it's very important that we save our agricultural land and we save the Meriden Gap. That's very important, Chairman. And I think members have spoke have spoken very well to articulate the reasons why they believe that this application should not go through. So the other item that I've almost missed was heritage assets, and that's the restoration of uh, Walford Hall. Uh, is there any comment to be made on that? It's obviously a substantially substantive positive uh, matter in terms of the overall balance of the decision um, uh, to bring back into use uh, an, an asset of that nature. Does anyone wish to comment on that? Councillor Cole and Councillor Ryan. Thank you, Chair. I must say, I, I love my history and I love my historical buildings and Grade 2 listed buildings, where appropriate, should be saved. And there's an opportunity to save this building here. Um, however, it, it's added to a motorway service station that I believe is inappropriate. And that leaves that building um, in a state of abeyance. So I'm, I'm, I'm pretty devastated about that. But you know, you've got to look at the green belt. Thank you, Chair. 
Ryan. Chairman, it can't be right to, to take so much and to give back so little and to take so much and then it's an insult to say, well, you give us all of this and we will, we will save, we will uh, repair or we will invest in the protection of a grade, a grade two star building. It should never have got into this state in the first place because powers exist that people who own such buildings have got a duty to keep them uh, well maintained, well repaired, so they last for future generations. Why have a grading system and why have a star system if we allow them to go into such dis uh, disrepair and decay? The local authority have got powers to do something about that. And it should not be the case that they require so much in terms of the green belt to put a small amount of investment into a grade two, two star listed building. Uh, it doesn't weigh up with me, Chairman, and uh, I think it's an insult even to suggest that. So if we could focus our attention now then on highway safety. Does anyone want to discuss highway safety? It has been alluded to before. Councillor Ryan made quite a significant point about it. Do we want to have any other comments made about highway safety? I think probably we've we've discussed that sufficiently. It's been going through my list effectively. Okay, so the, uh, the highway impact, I think that's been dealt with as well. Um, in terms of offline online uh, issues. Does anyone else want to comment on uh, highway impact? Uh, next issue is the need for the motorway service area. Um, I think that, that has been commented on in terms of not necessarily being um, the same thing as a very special circumstance. Councillor Allen. Yes, thank you. Uh, thank you, Chairman. Um, apparently, there is a, a significant need, according to the uh, um, according to the uh, um, information given to us on Circular O2 2013. Um, it is though the twenty eight mile distance thing is only uh, um, uh, a recommendation from the highways agency which is what other people have alluded to as well um, and the whole the whole premise of this um, of this motorway service station is resting on the fact that um, uh, it, the, these uh, motorway service stations are required um, for dra driver safety reasons um, and they say that the evidence indicates that 20 percent of road accidents on the uk are due to driver fatigue as there is no safe place to stop rest and refresh and reference has already been made to um, the location of uh, petrol stations and hotels within um, a, a, a very short distance from both of these um, junctions um, and the only reference to accident data appears on page 199 and it refers to junction 4 where up to the 31st of March 2016 there were 26 collisions recorded two serious and the rest slight none of them were shown to be um, due to driver fatigue um, and there's nothing noted about the area around Junction 5 in the report. Um, if driver fatigue is the reason for a motorway service station uh, to be built on the on the green belt, on our precious green belt, 
I would have thought that there should be some sort of evidence to back this up. Um, otherwise, there are no exceptional circumstances for this uh, for this application. Thank you. So the next issue, um, locational benefits and economic benefits. Economic benefits um, have been uh, put before us. Any debate on the issue of economic benefits? Councillor Hollallan. It's not really debate. It's obvious there'll be some economic benefit because we're, it's going to initially it will provide jobs for, for the building initially anyway. I've got, I haven't got the figures. We've got the figures, haven't we? Um, and then there will be, uh, you know, people actually servicing the service station, people working at the petrol station or in the hotel if they have it and so on. So, I mean, obviously that from that point of view, it's good. But it doesn't seem to me that is not the priority to what I'm looking at. My priority is the conservation and the care of the green belt. And I have we proven very special circumstances. And from where I'm standing, I don't think we have them. Thank you. OK, so we've um, got a number of other issues now. Um, landscape, character of the area, design, ecology, drainage, air quality, noise, vibration, amenity, lighting and contaminated land. Um, the one, two, three, four, five, six, seven preceding items, drainage, air quality, noise, vibration, amenity, lighting, contaminated land, all were uh, judged as having neutral weight uh, um, on both sites. Um, I'm not sure what we think, think about that. I mean, obviously, air quality is going to be affected, and so is noise and vibration. It's going to have a, a negative impact. It's got to, I would have thought. Uh, so I don't know whether you know there's any comment to be made on on those issues. Cole. Yeah. Um. Yeah. There is there is something I want, wanted to mention: noise, vibration, light pollution. It it drives the wildlife away. And the wildlife is, is under tremendous pressure there, and it just pushes it further into the Meriden Gap. Or, you know, where does it go when the Meriden Gap is completely full? So I do have concerns over that. There are deer in the area. There's, there's badgers and, and, and other wildlife and birds. It'll just, they'll just be driven further further into the countryside. And, you know, I'm not happy with it. Thank you, Chair. OK, well, could I suggest now we start looking at um, the uh, Shirley site and uh, the uh, nature of the issues um, in those same terms. So we'll start off by dealing with Greenbelt harm by definition. The size of the site uh, being 9.9 .9 hectares uh, with a six hectare operational development. And a comparison, uh, obviously, would be that the site at uh, Box Trees Farm is less uh, sizable than uh, Catherine de Barnes. Um, uh, but the Green Bell's openness um, uh, is obviously a, a, a by, I think it's it's fair to say it's clearly a shorter distance between Dorridge and Shirley and Soley Hull. Uh, it's it's a more fragile area of the Green Belt in terms of size and whether or not uh, members would like to, to talk about that particular issue, whether they feel its um, uh, impact will will be um, significant or whether they feel that uh, it's more than significant um, or less than significant in terms of their, their view uh, and the green belt purposes as well. So if we could start debate then about Shirley, please. Brinsall. Um, thank you, Chairman. Um, I think the comments that have been made um, thus far on all aspects 
have actually um, not just focused on the Catherine de Barnsley extra uh, application, but are equally applicable to um, the Apple Green application at Shirley. Um, we have to remember that that one is uh, recommended for refusal anyway. Um, so, you know, I, 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 I'm not sure that um, this should be overly protracted. Uh, and I know that Councillor Cole's got his hand in, his, in the air and I look forward to hearing from him. Well, you chair, I, I do concur with Councillor Grinsall on that. You know, um, what applies to one applies to the other. I will say something again I, on, on the on the green belt. It's still in the Meriden Gap and it's still taking agricultural land. Uh, it might have a, a bit more uh, of an area between it, but it, it's still being harmful to the uh, green belt. I don't see any difference this side or the other side. No harm. Thank you, Chair. I don't know what the view of the committee is, but in terms of my view, the the short gap between Dorridge and um, Shirley and Solihull uh, is is a substantially negative aspect of, of the planning balance that concerned me. In terms of Greenbelt openness, I thought it was significant that this would erode uh, on the um, Dorridge side of the M42 substantially into the green belt openness um and the and the character of the green belt as well um i thought it was very substantially negative in the in the aspect of um the way traffic would be able to access the site from uh, outside of the motorway network from the from the main um uh, road network uh, and it would become a very busy um um, um destination in itself I don't see how it can be anything other than we know it's by definition harmful, but in terms of the actuality of use of, of, of transport into that site, it conflicts very harshly, I think, with the Green Belt area. Um, that, that was my view in, in terms of it, its um, impact. Um, but obviously the site's smaller than, than the Catherine de Barnes site, but nevertheless, um, it, 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 for, for me, I thought that the Green Belt issues were probably more strikingly um, well, more concerning to me in terms of the Shirley site because of the nature of the the precious gap that was being um, more than nibbled away at there really in, in my view. Um, I'm conscious of what Councillor Grinsall said that we, we don't want to be repeating ourselves but I want to give uh, the opportunity for a fair uh, analysis of each fact, uh, each topic for each applicant, and there will, by by definition, be some repeti re repetition. I think, um, but I, I do think it's important for us to to give um, a, a proper uh, a debate for both applications because members may d decide that they, they 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 prefer this application. Councillor Hall Allen. Oh. Yeah, we'll just support what you've just said. I'm um, looking at, um, in addiction, the gate lane around that area and what they considered that they might do. I think it is, is a much bigger loss. The area is much more open around there. You're coming off the, the Stratford Road and then down gate lane and you just stop for a few minutes at the first junction. And it does mention that very strong right hand bend, which they would be changing uh, into three lanes, as I recall it. But I mean, in front of that really is open farmland. It really is. Um, you know, as Coastal Cole said, it, it's um, it's it's not arable. It's mainly mainly uh, animals, and it's mainly uh, cattle and sheep on those fields most of the time. Um, years now since I had much to do with farming, although I've brought up on them, um, because every few years you do actually have to turn the land over. But that's another story to get it back, to repair it, and then the animals come back on again. But that's another way. Of, of, it's the only way that is how farming is done. But I do think. Um, it, it, as you say, this is up. This uh, this one is up for refusal, and I do agree with the reasons they have put in. And look at page one five three. Really, harm to purpose of the green belt. I think it will 
Well, I think there's going to be a substantial harm down there. And when I spoke right at the beginning of this debate, Chair, I did say this. I don't dislike either of the actual plans, the, the, the buildings and so on, what they want to do. I, I don't think either of them. I think they're both attractive, uh, if not very similar to what we know now. There are more and more of them as they come along to the motorway. But I also think that, you know, th it's, it would damage this part of uh, the area. And I know I'm slightly biased because, of course, I've been, I do represent Noel. But even so, Dorridge is next door and Noel and we work with each other. And it would, uh, and then, you know, we'd push more back into Shirley. And also this junction is, is busy enough as it is, but that isn't the relevant um, topic which you're asking for. It's really the harm in the green belt. And I think it would be really exacerbated at that junction. Thank you. I think um, the, the character of the green belt also, and looking at um, the point that Councillor Hawkins made in his letter to the committee, uh, where he, he um, mentions the 750 dwellings at Blythe Valley Park, which, which are in a new entrant, if you like, to the area. They were not uh, previously part of the application knowledge of, of of the application that there's a significant residential de uh, development at Blythe Valley Park with an additional 1600 homes uh, identified in the local plan review and the the local road network will be compromised for existing business users and existing residents of Monks Path and Cheswick Green negatively I mean it's a substantial issue I think that um, the, the 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 amount of properties that are being built in the Blythe Ward and the Blythe Valley Park, which is immediately adjacent to it, are bound to have an interrelationship that is new to the scene. It is not something that any of the inspectors have previously considered. It's going to be a significant um, aspect, I think, of, of the overall traffic flow. And I, I, I think Councillor Hawkins' point is well made, personally. Um, so we, we've dealt with um, mainly green belt issues now, I think, on the uh, site at Shirley. Um, agricultural land. Uh, Councillor Ryan, you did indicate, I do apologise. That's very kind, Chairman. You're very kind. Thank you very much. Chairman, both sides, and I, I don't think we should draw great distinctions between the value of Shirley site uh, and uh, the value of Catherine de Barn. Um, the distance, of course, between the site in Catherine de Bonds and Catherine de Bonds village is very short. The distance between the, uh, the site at Catherine de Bonds and Hampton and Arden is very short. And the same applies to uh, the Shirley site. So drawing the distinct difference of playing one off against the other, they're, they're both in the green belt. And as a result of being both in the green belt, they are causing significant harm to the openness of the green belt. You mentioned, you mentioned houses being built in the Blyde Ward. Well, there's a great deal of, of impact of development within the Bicken Hill Ward and uh, of, the, um, of all of the development around HS2. And the airport when that uh, takes off again, and the NEC when that takes off again. So the impact in that area is very, very great indeed, as well as you said about the Blyde Ward and the impact of the traffic on uh, on uh, Junction Four of the Shirley. Uh, both of them have got, in my view, personal view, uh, the weighting is uh, which uh, is subjective. That weighting will only one of those weightings will outweigh the rest, and that is the green belt. The green belt weighting carries the greatest significance of any other weighting. So, because the weightings are subjective, and I think the uh, the recommendation for uh, Junction Four, the Shirley, is right, and I will be happy to support the recommendation. Uh, when it comes before us, Chairman. Thank you.
Sorry, you're on mute, Chair. Councillor Allen, uh, thank you. Thank you, Chairman. Um, yes, what uh, uh, Councillor Ryan has just said is absolutely true. Green belt is green belt, whether it's in Shirley or whether it's in Catherine de Barnes, and it's uh, it's exactly for exactly the same reasons um, that um, you know it's significant harm uh, to the green belt. The, the 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 reasons are exactly the same, and I also take your point about the. Uh, the, the traffic on the uh, on Junction 4. I know I use Junction 4 an awful lot. I use the motorway an awful lot. Um, uh, I drive up to Sheffield every week. I have for about 19 years. So, um, and I have to say, it's 97 miles between my home and my destination in Sheffield. And I can honestly say in those 19 years, I can't ever remember stopping at a service station. So uh, this 28 mile thing is a little bit, um, uh, a little bit um, of a, a misnomer for me. Um, but I do agree with you over the um, over the over the traffic, the 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 actual um, roundabout there, the traffic island there is uh, is very complicated already, and uh, obviously more um, uh, more traffic from Blythe Valley, uh, from the business park. Um, and I mean, there's an awful lot of traffic that comes down the uh, A34 as well. And as I think Councillor Ryan has alluded to, we're in a lockdown situation at the moment um, and people are only supposed to be travelling, you know, on, on for, for necessary things. Once it's all finished and everybody's back to something like normal, people are going to the airport, going to the NEC. We are going to have that um, that extra uh, extra traffic around there. It's all going to impinge on that part of um, that part of Shirley. So um, yeah, that's my uh, point on that. Thank you. Um, I think we probably dealt with need previously. I think it it it. Uh, it uh, seems to be uh, relevant to both uh, sites. I don't know if anyone wants to, to comment on need on this particular site. Chairman, can I just give you a point of clarification again, because it, it bothers me um, from the debate on Catherine de Barnes, and again, it's equally applicable to both. Um, I believe um, one of the members, one, one of yourselves, stated that need wasn't a very special circumstance. Well, actually, I disagree with that. It is very much so um, and in certainly previous appeals have indicated that as well um, it's in your it's in your pack again um, on page I think it's page 50 it's there but as I say the pack does state quite clearly that need is a very special circumstance so you do have to give that substantial weight and I know the weight is the same for both applications so I hope that's clear thank you Thank you for clarifying that. Uh, Councillor uh, McNaughton and Councillor Allen. Thank you. Yeah, that, that was me that made that reference. I think I think my point really was need can be a very special circumstance. Stance. It isn't necessarily a very special circumstance, and that's what we need to bear in mind and balance in, in you know in collaboration with everything. Um, uh, I, I don't really want to say any any, any more about that, actually, um, uh, Chairman. Um, uh, my idea is that need hasn't really been established. Kim Allen, do you want to talk, comment on this issue of need and its relationship to those special circumstances? I think it. It's probably one of the ingredients in the overall recipe. Oh, absolutely, it? yes, it is. And again, um, I will ask Lawrence to um, to share on this. Um, but from my point of view, it's that it's the absolute raison d'etre of why these app both applications are weaving this evening. Um, and the reports go in very clearly and in a detailed way for both applications at Catherine de Barnes and at Shirley as to why. The need exists. The need exists because there is circular 02 2013, and that, um, as Lawrence said in his presentation, 
requires that there is no more of a gap than 28, me 28 miles from one motorway service station to another. And the circular carries on to say that um, you cannot dictate people's routes, it has to be on the linear line of the, of, of the motorway. And again, in, in Lawrence's presentation, we had a very clear slide, we can bus it back up, and that does provide that visual demonstration that there is a gap, there's a significant gap on the Solihull stretch of the M42. And previous inquiries, again, all the speakers have referred to them, 2001, 2009, the need was um, accepted by the inspectors now. And the need's greater, because when the inspectors considered it, the um, circular was from 2008 and that circular required 30 miles between motorway service stations. It's now 28. And again, the circular is clear that 20% of all accidents are, are caused by tiredness and that is why a motorway service station is needed. So, and again, the reports do point out that, and it's in, in your tables, it's in the update notes, that there are the Catherine de Barnes only has one route in excess of 28 miles in its position, whereas the Shirley route has three routes in excess of 28 miles. And again, that is why the, the scoring um, or the, the, um, the weight that the officers have put are different between those two applications, with the Catherine de Barnes providing um, officers consider that is a substantial positive with only one route in excess of 28 miles, where we've given that a moderate positive for the Shirley scheme. And Lawrence, is there anything you'd like to add on that subject? Then please, um, please do so. Thank you. Just to add that, that, that there is the report and the papers set out what the definition is of a motorway service station, and that's what the minimum facilities they have to report but provide on site in terms of being open 24 hours a day, 365 days, showers for all the drivers free of charge, etc., and, and for, for lorries to park there. So it's quite clear, as Kim said, from the circular advice that there is a gap within the motorway network on this side of the motorway network through Solihull where there is a need for an MSA. Now, clearly, that the, when the original appeals were considered, the Secretary of State gave that significant weight. There has been a change since, as Kim said, since the, those inquiries, and that distance has shortened from 30 miles to 28. So the, the, the Secretary of State is saying that they, 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 they should be a lot closer together to the, the between motorway service stations. Therefore, I don't think we can you can attribute any different weight than others set out in the report. Both schemes. Uh, the, the need for an MSA on this section of the M42 is significant and you should you have to attribute the significant weight in the balancing exercise against the harm to the green belt which you've considered. Thank you Chairman. I just want to clarify one thing that Kim Allen said because in our in our table the new table there's no distinction made between the table for the need for the motorway association between the Catherine de Barnes or the Shirley site. They're both scored as being substantial positive. So um, I think that's right. I, I don't know whether I mis misunderstood what Kim Allen was saying, but she seemed to be suggesting one had been scored higher than the other. I, I could just clarify, Chairman, for you. I mean, yes, we're scoring on the table in terms of a need we're calling them we're um, suggesting to you that they, there is a significant need and they are substantial positive in both schemes but yes. what we've looked at is whether the one site is better than another in terms of locational preference and that's where we've given different weightings to the different sites we're giving a greater weighting to the one at Catherine de Barnes because when you consider the, the gaps in, in the network uh, that would then exist if you granted planning permission. There'd be still only one route in excess of 28 miles. Mm. But in the in the case of the Apple Green, the Shirley site, there will be three routes. So we we weighted it in accordingly in terms of that locational preference. So there is a difference between need and locational preference in the balancing exercise. 
And in terms of this fundamental question about very special circumstances and the issue of need, um, obviously the members have obviously debated the, the issues uh, considerably tonight about the various issues and Piers Greenbelt is a, a predominantly important issue for them. It'll be a matter for them to decide whether those issues are sufficient to outweigh uh, the substantial harm that has been identified in the schemes. I think that, that's the point that we're being asked to, to deal with, isn't it, really? We're, we're looking at the substantial harm and whether that is outweighed by the very special circumstances um, for, for, the, for the need for the site. Wants to come in, Chair. Who is that, sorry? If, if I may, Chair, thank you. Yes. Thank you, Councillor Hull and sorry, if I may chair, um, I think you, you've almost taken the words straight out of my mouth in that respect, where I was, I was just going to build on what Lawrence and, and Kim had previously said. I, I think you're spot on. It, what we've tried to do through the reports is demonstrate that there is a, there is a clear need. Uh, it's then as decision makers about how you weigh that need in terms of relative to the impact on the green belt into, and, and the other benefits of, of the scheme and so on. Um, I did also just uh, want to say that Obviously, we have colleagues from Highways England with us this evening, and it might be that they're able to add something further for members in terms of that need from a, a highways and a strategic network perspective. So I'll just bring them in there. Yeah, I'm happy to, to comment if, if Chair, that's requested. Chair, sorry, before you speak, is that appropriate at this point in time? They should have made representation, surely. So, sorry, just just to clarify, obviously, it's it should members find it, it helpful to have um, um, comments raised by the the managers of the strategic highway network in the respect that um, obviously the MSAs will would sit on the strategic highway network. So it's just whether there's anything members would find helpful that colleagues from Highways England could could clarify from a highways safety or network well, perspective. I am concerned about allowing uh, a late entrant into the debate that they're not disinterested uh, party are they they're advancing the scheme and there has been an opportunity really to to put forward presentations prior to this point we are through our debate now really members have discussed it so i i am i am probably concerned as much as the vice chairman um, about about allowing a, a contribution at this late stage maybe i should take legal advice as to whether or not it's appropriate Uh, Councillor Norton, did you want to say something? Yeah, just just about that. I mean, I, I think from what I've heard, I think all the committee members do 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 understand the argument put forward about need. Um, you know, I don't, I don't think we're making the decision in the dark in that respect. I think it's very clear in the papers. So, I, I, certainly myself, and from what I've heard others say, we do get the argument. But our job is to balance that against the other arguments. Um, I'm happy I'm in a position to do that at the moment. I think it depends whether everyone else. That's fine. And, and, and... From a procedural point of view, I don't feel very comfortable about uh, admitting uh, speakers at this late stage now. Unless I'm advised legally that I I'm required to admit it, I, I wouldn't be inclined to, to let them speak. So I'll seek legal advice, please, at this point. Thank you, Chair. Um, it's entirely your discretion, Chair, if you want uh, clarification on certain points. And I think that's what they were here for, to provide clarity on issues. But if members are happy with what's been said and spoken and don't need clarity from the papers and all the uh, reports that, that have been read, then there's absolutely no need. Um, so I'll leave it to your discretion, Chair. Yeah. Thank you. And, and, and Chairman and members, if I just could um, add, um, Highways England, because it's a strategic road network, um, you'll know that at every committee we, we include a, um, an officer from the Highway Authority, our transport engineer, but that's not possible for applications that are on the, the motorway, which is Highway England land. So that, that is the reason that they're here, just to provide you with any clarification that you might have wanted and nothing else. It's just to explain um, and, and that, that would be it no differently to the highway engineer we have okay so you know apologies if that was misconstrued yeah apologies for any confusion there chair well i think councillor uh, mcnaughton uh, pretty much uh, 
said what I was thinking, which is, do I need any further clarity from another speaker? I don't personally think I do. I think I understand the issues that are before us. We've given this a lot of consideration. But if there's anyone who wants to dissent in the committee and say that they do require greater clarification and they require that speaker to uh, speak, then I'm, I'm happy to let a, let a member say so. But at, at, my, at the moment, I'm minded not to allow it. Does anyone want to hear from them? No discourtesy to them, but I think uh, we, we've had their, their, their um, input. We're aware of it. It's been carefully considered by us. Uh, and I think I think that, that there's no need for further clarity. I think we should now probably move uh, to the the, uh, the vote unless there's any other um, view on this. So uh, the um, first item on the agenda, uh, substantively uh, item seven, uh, is uh, I'm looking for the page, but I know it says for approval. Um, so, uh, can I ask for a uh, named vote to be taken, please, on this first application for Catherine de Barnes? Thank you, Chairman. Um, Councillor Allen? Against. Against, thank you. Councillor Cole? Against. Against, thank you. Councillor Goff? Against. Against, thank you. Councillor Grinsell? Against. Against, thank you. Councillor Hollow. Against. Against, thank you. Councillor Holt. Against. Against, thank you. Councillor McNaughton. McNaughton. Against, thank you. Councillor Ryan. Against. Against, thank you. Councillor Slater. Against. Against, thank you. Uh, that's all nine against the uh, recommendation, Chairman. So I think we'll lead now to uh, consider a proposal for uh, the reasons for refusal. Uh, could I, no doubt the officers have been carefully following the um, deliberations of the committee. Uh, I think the focus uh, from most of the participants has been uh, a concern, deep rooted concern about the green belt and its importance. Um, could I ask uh, the officers please to um, confirm um, how they would like to proceed in terms of the uh, proposal for um, for the, the reasons for rejection of the proposal. Chair, can I come in? It's really quite simple. It's policy P17 of the local plan. I think I'd like to make reference to the, the green belt issues. Um, uh, Kim Allen, can you assist me? Chair. Yeah, but it's 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 the it's the, the very nature the very nature of the the issues involved. Thank you, Chairman. Um, well, I'm mindful um, as I've as I've heard members this evening, and obviously um, you will correct me if my interpretation's wrong. Um, but as I've heard it, members, you're all quite clear um, and united in the view that the um, motorway service station at Catherine de Barnes would cause, um, have a harmful impact to the green belt and that the um, benefits of the scheme are not clearly outweighed by the disbenefits. Now, in my mind, the reason for, for any reason for refusal would be, would mimic and be identical to the recommended reason for refusal that officers have, have cited for the Apple Green, um, sorry, for the Shirley site, which is on page 246. Um, the only differences would be that we would be uh, referring to the Hampton and Arden neighbourhood plan rather than the Norland and Orridge one. But the reasons around um, it's inappropriate development in the green belt, um, it's harmful by definition to the green belt, significant harm to openness and to the character and appearance of the green belt. And of course, um, rather than saying to three of the five purposes, we would be saying one of the five purposes and we'd probably. Um, um, share what which one that is, which um, relates to encroachment of the countryside. Um, and then lastly, the, the reason we, we carry on to say the very special circumstances put forward by the applicant in support of the proposal do not clearly outweigh the harm to the green belt by reason of inappropriateness and the other harm resulting from the 
from the proposal. So that is, I, I would um, I would advise members that that would be the um, a robust reason for refusal. And again, it aligns itself well with the recommendation that um, has been put forward um, for, the, for the other side. But it's certainly applicable to Catherine de Barnes. It's helpful. I don't, I'm, not, I'm not sure whether the limited nature of one of the five reasons uh, necessarily uh, is, is, is something that we would want to limit ourselves to. Can we, can we look at other aspects of, of the debate that, that could incorporate more than one of the five reasons? Can we not, Chairman, mention uh, safety concerns? Uh, safety concerns were raised by members uh, with regard to uh, with both sites road safety concerns also chairman loss of agricultural land yep i think i think personally we ought to keep our uh, reason for refusal uh very much within the green belt issues. I think they're defensible uh, and they're robust and we're less prone to um, exploitation on appeal, frankly. Um, so I would encourage us to, to focus on the green belt, but I, I, I'm, I, I make the point about one of the five reasons of the green belt. Um, I mean, harm by definition we accept. Um, openness uh, is, is an issue. Uh, purposes of the green belt um i i don't know i i, I just I don't, I don't quite follow why we're just limiting it to one of five rather than more than one of five items and what is the one issue that we're, we're focusing on in terms of the green belt issue as, as to the reason for the refusal um chairman if i may on page 38 of your report um that sets out the five purposes of the of the green belt, and it comes from paragraph 134 of Thank the MPPF. You. Now it may well be that you just want to relate to paragraph 134, but reasons for refusal should be precise. Um, so it, it would be helpful to identify which which of those five um, members feel this, the scheme doesn't meet and those five um, for everyone's benefit are firstly to check the unrestricted sprawl of a large built-up area to prevent neighboring towns merging into one another to assist in safeguarding the countryside from encroachment to preserve the setting and special character of the historic towns and to insist in urban regeneration by encouraging the recycling of derelict and other urban land and uh if we could consider mentioning one more, and that is the strategic value of the of the Meriden Gap. I think the Meriden Gap ought to be part of our reasons for refusal. Well, I think that that, uh, that that that's right because it's one of the the most critical parts of the Green Belt in the West Midlands, isn't it? It, it should yeah. be identified as as yeah. important. Thank you, Chairman. Of all of those five reasons, I think you know almost all of them would 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 satisfy our debate tonight. Sprawl, neighbouring mergers of of communities on both sites, uh, encroachment on both sites, special setting. You know, they're, they're very special rural areas that people have a lot of benefit and, and joy out of, and you know they they're, they're being um, seriously. Um, undermined aren't they by these developments if they were to take place so i think all of those personally uh, have featured in our debate tonight so could i uh, invite um, uh, members to um we'll have to put this forward as a um a proposal for refusal now i think won't we um along those lines could i have some guidance as to how you, you want to phrase that Uh, Chairman, it's really voting upon what Kim has um, has Just read out. Step. Yeah, yes. and if we can if we can include the Meriden Gap, yes, as part and, of that, then I think yeah. that's a sound reason for for us to vote yeah. on. 
and I think I think we're adding to the, those five. Uh, well, one of the five reasons. I think there's four of the five reasons at least in there as well. We can also include B17 of the local plan. Of course. Yes. Yeah, of, course. Um, of course, members. Um, again, what I would remind you is that um, more normally in our well, and I think we're doing it now, but with any where there's been a um, overturn of the recommendation, um, officers. The, are delegated to the chairman and the vice chairman for getting the the detail of the writing. So all we need to understand here and now is what aspects um, we are looking at, and it's P seventeen of the local plan, which is which is green belt. If yes. my colleagues have got anything to say on that, then please um, please do. I, th I think members will be content with the proposal that the, the reasons are as, as debated uh, and will be formalised in writing. Uh, so um, if we could have, have a, a, a proposal put forward, please, um, for refusal on those grounds, setting out those grounds. Uh, and as proposed. Well, proposed by Councillor Grinsall. Second, seconded by Councillor Hall Allen. A name vote, please. Councillor Allen? Four. Four, thank you. Councillor Cole? Four. Four, thank you. Councillor Goff? Four. Four, thank you. Councillor Grinsall? Four. Four, thank you. Councillor Hall Allen? Four. Four, thank you. Councillor Holt? Four. Thank you. Councillor McNaughton? Councillor McNaughton? So I didn't catch that, Councillor McGill. I didn't catch that, Councillor McGill. It was four. Four. Thank you, Councillor Ryan. Four. Four. Thank you, Councillor Slater. Four. Four. Thank you. That's all nine in favour, Chairman. Thank you very much. So the next item on the agenda is uh, in respect of uh, a vote for the Shirley uh, service station uh, at uh, item nine and ten of the agenda. The recommendation is one of refusal. Do have a name vote, please. Thank you, Councillor Allen. Four. Four, thank you. Councillor Cole. Four, thank you. Councillor Goff? Four. Four, thank you. Councillor Grinsall? Four. Four, thank you. Councillor Hall Allen? Four. Four, thank you. Councillor Holt? Four. Four, thank you. Councillor McNaughton? Thank you. Councillor McNaughton? Four. Four, thank you. Councillor Ryan? Four. Four, thank you. Councillor Slater? Well, thank you. That's all in favour of refusal, Chairman. Thank you very much. Uh, that concludes our events for this evening. Can I extend my gratitude and thanks to the officers for their work and for members of the committee in dealing with, with what has been a very complicated and challenging